Dude, I just realized that Hall Halloween, Christmas is in four weeks today. What is happening? Where did this year go? I swear it was like 2016, like a second ago, and now it's not. There is something wrong with society. We must fix everything. And you know how we can fix it? By counting. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on this fine 27th of November, 2023. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful week and haven't been having the existential where did the year go comments that I've been making. Uh, but no, my week's been pretty good. Um, pretty chill actually. I actually spent like a fun kind of week, uh, spending a bit of socializing, uh, and uh, ultimately I've ended up here. I've somehow ended up back at, back at the stream. Why don't we jump right into the game instead of me constantly rambling or worse. There we go. I hear the sound. The sound is there. Where's the video? There it is. Nice. Uh, we're playing Tomb Raider 3 today. I thought you can't tell, but no, nah, yeah, Tomb Raider 3. That's the stream of the now. Uh, on the last stream, we've uh, uh, you know gone through all the South Pacific Island levels. Um, including killing a bunch of natives. And what is worse than- worse or better? Take your fancy than killing natives. Uh, that's right. Heading to London in it. Where we shall collect the final of the pieces of the meteorite that we need to collect. Uh, this first level is the Thames Wharf. Uh, it's got five secrets. I do not know where most of the secrets are, but, um... If I had to describe this area, it'd be... It's kind of... It's like a loop. Imagine a circle, and you can really only go down on one side, and up on the other. Well, technically, you could go down on the other side, but you can't go back up the other side, so... Uh, I'm going to be very careful. Because, uh... This is... Uh, it's a bit dicey. And there's birds! There's crows coming to ruin your day. Flick this lever! And the all-important platform reveals. Uh, keep your eyes peeled because uh, there's lots of climbing bits on the ceiling as well. Um, so very important to keep on top of. Drop down. Also, Lara's right. What are we? What are we looking at? <laughs> what are we looking at? Like I know there's a guy down below, but it's not like he can see you from here. Let's take the most useful zip line in the world, which is there. Fortunately, you know, this ledge is very telegraphed, but, uh, yeah, if you didn't have, uh, this platform here, you're kind of screwed, so. Now he's gonna try and get us. We got guys with guns. I got laser sights. You think Lara would maybe take this, because it's an MP5, but, uh, nah, she doesn't take the weapon if, uh, well, if she doesn't need to. And also, a lot of the enemies in this, um, in this whole world, really, they drop health, which is quite curious. Let's pull this lever, which uh, pulls the ledge back down, which will be useful for later. So we'll keep that there for the moment, and we'll do a, we'll drop a save to continue on uh, with the level. Um, hello, sorry for bothering you. I want to offer promotion of your channel, viewers, followers, views, viewers and views, chatbots, etc. The price is lower than any competitor. The quality is guaranteed to be to be the best. Flexible and convenient order management panel, chat panel. Everything is in your hands. Go to, I assume there's a dot in your your wonderful website. Um, and as the point that I always make, um, why would I want fake views? So, so that I can, oh, I forgot. I forgot, there's a bait ledge there. That's gonna, this is gonna be a general trend of this uh, world. Uh, playing this one again, Unlike the last world where I was like, yeah, I actually really dig this level design. Oh man, I actually remembered why I didn't like this one. This whole world, I'm just like, oh my gosh. We got giant rats, by the way. Look how massive they are. Maybe it's a London thing. Um, but again, yeah, the point that I've probably iterated quite a number of times. Why would I want fake views, man? I just, you know. I, I make stuff for the funds and for people to enjoy. I don't take pride or really enjoyment out of... Uh, cheating the viewership game, so, uh... Now, is every single view I get legit? No, because... Freaking... 
it's impossible to rule that out. Do you know how many people run botnets to just boost random channels into thinking that they're doing okay? In an attempt to lure them into more bots. Because if people are getting two views, they're going to feel very disenfranchised and they're going to be like, oh, what's the point? If you're showing people, hey, yeah, I can get your last stream bot up to 70 views in a week, which uh, happened and I'm quite curious how that did happen. But sure, yeah. Um, also, yeah, we got a flu room key. Very important that you pick up this key. Uh, let's uh, do this weird jump here, but you should be able to grab this ledge. And uh, we should be able to drop all the way down here. Well, look at that. It's harpoon ammo. Very useful. We're going to need to hold on to this for a moment. Um, but yeah. Uh, side note, by the way, uh, if anyone noticed the stream VOD from last week, uh, was the first stream VOD that I've uh, uploaded where I've, the ads are forced to be enabled. I have no choice in this matter. YouTube forces the ads. Uh... The difference, the only thing I get is whether I choose to have them on or not. Uh, previously, uh, I've, I've mentioned before, previously I've always had pr like video, any form of the video is not playing ads. I've always opted out of those because I hate those. If I'm watching a video, I don't want to see these. Now, I don't really like any kind of ad, but the other ones don't waste my time. My time is mega precious, and you know me, but YouTube, nah, we want to optimize the content for creators, so uh, they force all kinds of ads on. Um, in turn, it means that my ad revenue is like seven times higher than it used to be, which is not saying much, but it means that I'm getting seven cents as opposed to one cent for the same number of views, which is neat, but YouTube, it's seven cents. I don't care. You guys care, I guess. Sure, but like... You know, my time's more precious, man. I, I'm not gonna freaking watch videos if all I'm gonna do is only like seven cents, bro. It's, it's, it's a very, very big waste of time just for seven cents. If you want money out of me, you make YouTube Premium something I would actually pay for. Which, now they're like, oh, okay, do, do tell. And I'm like, all you gotta do, all you gotta do, YouTube. And this is, this is my thing. All you gotta do, YouTube, two bucks. What features do you get? Nothing. Ad free. But two bucks. Uh, which, you might go, isn't that like, what about all the other cool things you get? Like YouTube Music. Yeah, I pay for Spotify. I get no value of YouTube Music. YouTube Red. I don't care about YouTube Red. I'd prefer to pay for that separately. Or, sorry, not YouTube Red, but like the, you know, the, the, the videos they make. Like that kind of stuff. Uh, interestingly, you can't jump onto that ledge, but you can do this. You can jump back. Oh. You can do... I don't remember that ledge being there, which means that there's a button that I f must have missed somewhere. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there must have been a button somewhere. Okay. These jumps get very dicey very quick. <laughs> also, this is going to be a, a slightly dark stream, just because it's at night time. That's it, but... Uh, don't worry, uh, my aim is, hopefully, we get all this stuff, all this, these levels done in this one stream, but, uh, listen, you're, you're the ones, it, well, if you're watching live, you don't know when the stream ends. If you're watching the VOD, you know how long this takes. Uh, given all the other streams were about 2 hours 20, my prediction is this is a little longer, and I know I'm in full control of making it longer, but yeah. Um, but yeah, no, YouTube, all you gotta do is just make a very cheap... But just like entry level, you know, plan. I would gladly pay two bucks a month. Um, I, I love how there's two. Oh my gosh, another bird. Where is he? Where's he chilling? I hear him. I hear him. I don't see him. Okay, he's getting caught in something. I don't know what's going on there. Let's crawl through this airspace. For some odd reason, um, this. Oh! No, 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 bad bird, bad, bad, get out of here. <laughs> I didn't wait for me to crawl in here. Uh, behind me is like that second hole that we saw. I don't know why it exits out over nothing. I think it's supposed to bait you when you come back through here so that you, you know, please make sure that you go into the right hole. Imagine being this crow and you got nothing better to do than to terrorize me. 
too bad he uh, you know, missed missed the mark. Uh, we got a little uh, what's the term of these like little window cleaner things? Press the button and it reveals a button. This is a very annoying series of things that we've done because uh, in theory, to explain the level a bit more as a, as I've explained, it's a it's a loop. Um, and there's nothing else you can really do here. You can't even drop down. It's a bit too far, and there's, I don't think there's actually anything down there. And if there is, cool, actually. But, um, but yeah, on, on the other row of buildings that we're on, it's a bit of a loop. I'm about to drop down to the bottom, and then there's a nice way to climb all the way back up to the top. And there were two paths to go to, and I've actively <laughs> gone through the path that you actually had to go to. There's going to be a lot of that this stream, and hopefully I can minimize it knowing my knowledge of the levels but there's gonna be a lot of that where these levels are very annoying and that they don't exactly tell you where to go you've got a sort of larger area that takes a bit of time to circumnavigate and uh, you're constantly um, having to find the the actual way that progresses because there's a lot of just things you check especially the, the second level this guy isn't triggered by the way until you walk down um, but yeah, especially the second level is is home to this very annoying puzzle where you've effectively got to gather keys in one half of the, the temple and then navigate to this other part. But we'll get to, we'll get into that one. We'll get into that one. Um, yeah, no, no. YouTube needs to offer a cheap thing. Like, most of these services, unfortunately, aren't crazy profitable. And to me, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm a focus group. I would legitimately pay a little bit for all the websites that I use a ton. I... You know, I provide Patreon money to um, to retro achievements. I probably do the same for like rate your music because they have very cheap patron things. I don't need many features. I'm just literally going to pay a little bit for the sites that I legitimately use a ton. And also, both of those sites are ad free. Actually, no, sorry, rate your music is not ad free. Sorry, guys. Whoops. Steam DB is ad free. So now we're at the bottom. We've got this fun little ladder that we can use to get back up. But there's actually nothing at the bottom specifically. It's just. It's convenient to climb down and shoot a guy. I love this rain, by the way. It's it's proper, legit rain. I know it's from, like, you know, it's in an earlier level as well. But again, like, um, like I'm playing through Dirt 5 right now. I know, right? A new game. And it's new-ish in the sense of it's got ray tracing. Ooh, fancy. Also, I love these, um, it's like, you can see the shotgun shells over there. And I'm like... Have a, have a guess, you know, okay, it's over there, I'm gonna take a jump. So you do the jump. It's just... It's just a little bit too far. It's just a little tiny bit too far. <laughs> it's a bit mean. A bit, a bit very mean, if you will. Uh, so we can't get that one, but we can continue climbing up. There's more place to climb up, which will allow us to get back up to the top. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, no, playing Dirt 5, uh, I'm only really like a, a couple of hours into it, um, Dirt 5 is a 2020, I believe, game, um, continuing on the Dirt franchise in its weird release kind of way that no one really understands, uh, which is there's arcade games titled Dirt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there are proper simulation games titled Dirt Rally 1, Dirt Rally 2, and WRC, which recently came out. Um, uh, so I guess there's no confusion now, but like back back then it's like, yeah, okay. Uh, so interestingly, you can see that, yeah, okay, there's a bit of like ground over there, there's a big slope, which uh, hopefully should imply a little bit of level design going on, but then you're like, how do I get over there? And it's, um, it's a bit weird, because it's like the way that I think you meant to do this is do this jump again get yourself all the way over to the platform which which by the way the oh wait hold on I don't know why I'm <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing a run and jump when I'm gonna climb it anyways um but you can see like this uh you don't even need the, <laughs> the swing to even get there but you can see that there's a little ledge over there I'm gonna try and nope I didn't save until I was at the bottom of the bit, was I? Like, when I tried the other jump. Yeah, okay. Bit more climbing, sorry everyone. Um, but yeah, Dirt 5 is the arcade game, the newest of the arcade Dirt games. They might 
drop another one soonish, but um, but uh, effectively how it plays is you just do event after event, just like Dirt Four or Dirt Three. But Dirt Four, Dirt Four had a feature that was rather interesting, which was it was proper rally, um, and uh, it had um, randomly generated levels. Like they were all effectively the same series of corners. Uh, or rather, not the same series of corners, but the same set of corners, all stitched together in rather random ways, uh, with enough combinations and, or rather, permutations that, uh, you know, you would you would not pick up on it as quickly as you know maybe you, you should, or something like that. I don't know, but it does mean that all the events are somewhat unique. Um, you're constantly going through bits that you don't really expect, and uh, that made Dirt Four rather interesting. Uh, on top of that, well, it was proper rally in the sense of you have a co-driver who's telling you instructions and it was that for most of the game it's got a rally cross mode but it was fairly straightforward here's the the wonderful ledge by the way so then you drop down here which fortunately i again just just to credit the game when when it's due they do have health here so they do signal this ledge pretty well it's just you know, dropping all the way down. It's like, where do you go, first off? Because you can't see the things that you're meant to get first. So, if you accidentally go over this way... Nice camera angle. Very nice. If you do go this way first, then, uh... You know, you're, you're going quite the wrong way. Um... I also love how this whole kind of, like, ledge off to the right is... Modelled. They put in the time to model all this stuff over there, but, uh, interestingly, you don't... Go over there. Actually, it might be the end of the level over there, I think. Um, but you don't go over there quite, you know, the way that you want. Uh, so let's climb in through this little door. And, uh... England! Hooray! Uh, nothing we can really do here, just a bit of a jump. And a bit more climbing and a bit more running and jump. Hey, 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 hey! Get, get out of there, don't want you. Um, just remember as well, you can technically pick this world, just like the other two worlds, you can technically pick it first, immediately after you're, you're done with the Indian jungles. Um, but I would probably argue these levels are sort of gnarly in terms of the amount of things that you're meant to pay attention to, and that's, uh, that sort of makes it, you know, kind of weird. It's, it's, it's weird, because these levels are designed... With a certain difficulty curve in mind. I think that the Nevada levels are maybe a bit, you know, in the middle, but... Yeah. So pressing that button raises this little, uh... You know, dumb trolley? I don't know what they call it. I was gonna call it the dumb waiter. Uh, I guess you kind of take a jump. And then you proceed to get shot by someone? Someone was aiming at me for a moment? And this is the point in the, in the level where it's like, Oh, really? That's what they expect you to, to do? So you're like jumping over here, you're jumping all around, and suddenly... Here is... Where the flu room key goes. So if you just didn't go to the other area, then you'd be like, oh, okay. Weird dead end. Navigate inside and ignore the birds for a hot second. We've got a little room. These walls are probably a bit of a tell. As well as we've also got a little save point, so that's cool. Press the button. Uh, that is a very useful camera. What did that even show? That just the room is going to be on fire? Oh, snap! Good thing the rain doesn't put Lara out. That's what I get for running. I... I, I sort of bolted on that one, so... Uh... But yeah, no, I... Like... The only thing with Dirt 5 is that I don't really have a lot to say about it. It's a game where you drive some cars around, um... Because it doesn't have that co-driver rally mode. It's... Basically all rally cross in various ways. You've got a track, you drive around, you be an absolute jerk to everyone and punt them out of the way constantly. They'll then rubber band and nearly kill you at the end of the race. Um, and then uh, you get some rewards which you use to just buy more cars or things like that. Um, but, you know, there's no upgrades or progression or actual rally mode. So if you're expecting any of that, well, it's not there in this game. Um, but... It is also very much like Dirt 2, I think, as a, as, as a, as a connoisseur of repetitive release racing games. Um, by the way, once you press that button, which indicated a thing, it's not really clear what it indicated, but... 
tell you what it did, which is very hard to even see. You gotta... Oh, snap. That was a bit of a drop. We're back down here, which is kind of neat. Um, I mean, you probably noticed that dumb waiter ledge from earlier. Again, a very awkward jump. You could maybe jump up and down, but yeah. Uh... But yeah, the, the nice thing about Dirt 5 is that I wasn't expecting anything more. I was expecting Dirt 2, and it, it is very Dirt 2. You got the fun music and the fun kind of presentation and crazy amounts of confetti and the lighting is crazy and the um, the time of day just absolutely goes nuts because it's like you start a race in the middle of the day and suddenly three minutes later it's just pitch black. Um, there's fun things like that. Uh, is it realistic? No, it really doesn't control like I'm on dirt. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna criticize something, you definitely criticize the structure of the game. But I think it, it should get points for presentation and in, in some capacity. Uh, it runs well, ish. If you crank up all the settings, it does sort of slog. But you do the the easy things, which is you fix LOD mostly. This is what I do for most games. It's like, I, I fix LOD, because at 4K it's very obvious when you're getting LOD swapping, if the game doesn't account for that. And it is in this one. It's obvious. So, turn all your, you know, foliage and auto-generated texture quality up all the way. Uh, and then, uh... And then keep everything on automatic. So, like, shadow quality, because it's a lot harder to spot shadow quality in motion. Um... And uh, even a little bit of dynamic resolution. It doesn't have upscaling. Uh, we're not at that stage yet. The ray tracing is fairly mild. It's just uh, reflections on the car. Um, but if you keep all of that, your computer should do pretty alright. Your computer should really like this game. Um, so that's fun. Uh, and I'm playing the 4K as well, so I can definitely assure you it looks mostly fine. My gripe is some of the textures are a little bit mm, not quite there. And there's temporal anti-aliasing, which is the bane of my existence. I absolutely hate temporal anti-aliasing. Um, because uh, there's things like uh, I've got a car, like a little antenna on my car. At, you know, some cars just got an antenna on it. That antenna, either I am constantly seeing ghosting of where the antenna was like the frame before, or the antenna disappears. It just blurs into the void. Um, and it's ridiculous that there's no way to turn the temporal anti-aliasing off. It's an absolutely ridiculous setting. I hate it. I really do hate temporal anti-aliasing. I do strongly wish MSAA was still around, and in a modern example, DLAA, or any any other form. Temporal is just, it's it's not for me. I don't like temporal. I should probably say before I try this jump again, which I love how you got to do an entire lap of this room before you can actually continue. And there's probably a secret somewhere. Maybe. It could be a secret, but... Um, but yeah, no, oh, I hate temporal anti-aliasing. I just... Ugh. It just looks hideous. Like, yeah, I guess you do get anti-aliasing. You know, like, someone would complain that things are aliased. I get it, but, like, I'm playing at 4K. I, I can spot the, the blurring so much more than I can spot the aliasing when in motion. At times. But in motion, it should be pretty clear. And on top of that, when you're under intense motion, guess what? The aliasing reappears. Temporal is just not the solution. I do not like it. So. Uh, but yeah, no, would I recommend it? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I The price is a bit weird right now. I got it in the Humble Monthly like ages ago. Um, and uh, also this ledge is now open. This particular drop. That's what this was looking at, by the way. This, like, drop here. It was closed before, and now it's open. Uh, and it leads into this fun slide, which still doesn't really look like we're exiting the level. But trust me, this is like a little tiny ledge right here, uh, <laughs> where we drop down from up there. It's like, it's impossible to land here. So if you do the... <sighs> Uh, that's, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. 24 minutes, by the way, we're just wandering around this part of the level. And remember, I've still got to cram, this is a... It is four levels, but the, the last level is actually very, very short, so... Just like the other worlds, eh, it's probably about the same three level length, but... The length of the levels in particular, that will be our, our, uh... Achilles heel? That's not really an Achilles heel. It's a heel of some kind. 
Um, yeah, no, no. I don't, yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend it. Five um, at its price. Uh, it's got that problem of uh, also um, some people complain about too much content in the DLC, like not enough in the main game, too much in the DLC. And they marketed it as a, a year one DLC as well. So it's just like, oh wait, you were here the whole time? It's probably, I, I didn't go back on this ledge. And before you go like, oh, didn't you like come back on this ledge? No, because the, the little platform. We jumped down all the way to land on it. So it's like, legit, you can't just go back to this ledge. Um, keep that in mind as well. I know there's some secrets in the next level that are just absolutely horrendous. How much backtracking is involved to do them. So anyway, we slide down. Now, fortunately, two of the three levels in this uh, world follow the um, the the two halves level design as a well. It's probably I don't know. It's, I'm not coining it. It's, it's probably just oh, why did I just walk right over that? Why did I, walk? I don't need it. Hi, rats. Who's the big rat who makes all of the rules? Uh, now, weirdly, um, we're in the, like, the sewers, and, uh, there's just a guard. This, like, unlike the other guys, who might have been, like, kind of gang related, no, that's, that's just a guard. That's just a guy chilling there, so. Yeah. Uh, the main way that this level works is, or this half of the level works, is now we have two buttons under locks. And we have this lever here. This lever will cause a fun whooshing noise. And uh, how this area works is that this hallway connects to two... Um, I guess large silos? So pulling that lever turns on and off the water. Which is apparently still making noise. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we can swim around, but I don't think there's anything quite here, so that's okay. Uh, the second silo is physically connected to a third one, by the way. And then there's a bunch of just tunnels all over the place, because of course, uh, of course there are. Uh, so if I head over here, we should see now another silo all filled up. Uh, you can see some items at the bottom. This is probably our tell that swimming down is a, a good sign. But uh, I, I think you spotted that one as well. There's a little lever there. And this lever is very important because it opens a door in the other silo. There you go. Why am I constantly hearing a noise there? Weird. Uh, so yeah, third silo is accessible, but uh, nothing to do just yet, I think. I think because if you go in it, it's empty. Might as well, might as well solve the mystery. We'll check it out just for the hot second. But yeah, I think it is empty. Yeah, it's empty. So, I mean, yeah, you can you can look, but you can't exactly go anywhere other than down and breaking your neck. Not very fun. Uh, so I've got a, um, a topic, I guess. I'm not very knowledgeable on VTubers, so, uh, I don't exactly know, like, I, I mean, I'm not really a, a great representative of, like, the kinds of things that people do watch on Twitch. I make, a uh, I make content that I just think is cool, in the sense of, like, you know, I, I want to share these games, and I want to provide some commentary, and I want to give people a bit of a good experience, and a good insight, and maybe encourage people can play the games that I play, you know, that kind of stuff. Oh, what is that noise in my ear? What's going on? So, swim down. Oh, it's the fans. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Almost forgot. Okay, before we swim down here, those fans are going to slice and dice Lara and turn her into puree croft. Um, what we need to do is uh, come back and flip the switch again. This will lower the water level, but not entirely. Um, but just a little bit. Ugh. That noise probably should have been the deterrent. It's like, oh, by the way, there's a noise. Wee-oo-wee-oo. <laughs> Ding-dong, there's a noise. 
Um, so we come back to this room. The water is very drained, but not all the way. You've still got a, a staircase that you can climb back up. Drop down into the, the way now. And these fans slow down. Conveniently. Uh, they still push you, but... You know, you can, you can slot past them. It's all fine. Uh, is there anything on that? Nope. Okay. But now we climb ourselves out and into the, uh, the underworld of, of apparently getting shot by more London guards. What's with the hat? I really want to know what's with the hat. Unless these guys are part of a gang and I'm just like very unaware of it, but I'm pretty sure they're not part of a gang. I think they're actually just guards. Okay. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh, rats! You know, the rat is probably a good way of indicating where you need to go. Very nice. Got some music. Um, so as someone who isn't very aware of VTubers and stuff like that, I'm very immune to, um, I guess, what I'd like to call VTuber propaganda or... Um, marketing? I don't know. Point is, VTubers are a crazy emerging market in the sense of, like, they make a ton of money. Um, not all VTubers, but definitely, you know, the big ones make a lot of money. Uh, if we jump down this ladder, I'm pretty sure if you go down here... Yes, okay, for some reason the camera signals this one thing, and then... Oh, look at this! I don't know what this is, this is just a completely out of control machine. And you can see he's, uh, he's wandering about. Uh, and if you watch for long enough, you'll pick up on something, which is, he's constantly following the left path. He will always turn left, turn around, and then do some wacky stuff. I think if we hit this button, we get some lights. Uh, sort of. A little bit. Helps you out. Although I don't know why there's no light on uh, this ceiling. And I thought there was something to it. Maybe there is, but I don't know off the top of my head. Um, it doesn't exactly indicate what's going on, but we did have a camera flash of this. And uh, the trick is, is that this is a little button that the robot needs to mess up. But based on the robot's path, he's never going to walk there. So what you need to do is pull this box because he stops at this box. So wander out and then we can start doing this box pushing behavior uh so as someone who's immune to vtuber stuff i would like to introduce you to this thing called the vtube the global vtuber awards which is a award ceremony i do not know how long it's existed or what it's really come from really uh by a company called uh i was gonna say um Tricking Logcast, that's the company. Logcast is a company founded by, I think is the person Swedish? She went on, um, Kirsch's stream and, uh, explained, uh, this talk that she did and why there's a bit of backlash on this one. And I don't have anything really new about, uh, what does it mean as a VTuber when someone comes by and introduces a global VTuber award ceremony, except if you nominate yourself, you grant you know, sort of unnegotiable... Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, gosh, hold on, I'm gonna jump right, I'm gonna jump right. Ooh, get out of there. Okay, I had a bit more time than I thought, but still. We're almost there, we're almost there. The trick is, I think, if you get the... There you go. If you get the, the block on this next spot, he has to follow the entire path. There's now no loops, because it's like a figure eight, and you've blocked off kind of a point. So, we'll keep going around, but it'll eventually run into that one point, uh, and then we can continue the level. Interesting puzzle, though. It's a little bit terrifying that this thing is just going all around. He's going to take a sweet time, though. Also, it, like, just the ends are shocking. Here he goes, turns around, turns left, zap, <laughs> very zap, and a bit of smoke just for good measure. Uh, we now have opened up one of the two buttons back at base, 
which means now we've got to do the fun walk of going back, but it's not actually that bad. It's just at the top of this ladder. Amazingly, this a the, the, the ladder actually didn't go anywhere up until just then, and now suddenly that vat's open and you were just directly under the start. Very nice. If I'm going to commend the game for, you know, pointing me back to where I need to go, that's smooth as. That's very smooth. You're even facing the button. How cool is that? So press this button. Excuse me, I couldn't hear you walk in. Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, you know, people have issues with um, big companies, I guess, in general. And, and to some degree, VTubing is certainly a crowd where that seems to be the case more often. There's a lot of companies that are willing to be like, oh, you know, like, work for us on commission or for funsies and they absolutely lowball you as an entertainer because, I don't know, like, you're, you're just a guy who streams on Twitch. And they're like, oh, look, they're gonna... Oh. Gotta fill the water level. Yeah, yeah, the other the other that, you know, a little bit of water. This one, nah, no water. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, a, a lot of VTubers do get exploited. That kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, when a company comes along and sort of offers something for free, it's a little bit weird. Uh, what's kind of weird is that the, um, the CEO has a talk... Uh, about VTubing and digital twinning and that kind of concept and as I guess a developer as someone who legitimately like works in uh, The industry of software construction um, You know like I've got not not, not insight. It's more like I guess experience or what I don't know how to say it. I, I don't know, but uh, but it's like and I, I, I've seen how these companies work, and I, I, I studied this kind of, this kind of tech. And so, oh, everyone likes a good old siren, by the way. Um, I don't think there's anything in the water, although you can clearly see there's a trap door that we'll need to encounter later. But I think you just need to go up and knock this guy off his block. What's a British phrase for beating someone up? Give him a gob smack. Smack his gob. Was King hit? Is that a British phrase? I don't know. Uh, standing here for some reason triggers a door. I, I hear the door. I do not know where the door is. Is it that? Is that the door? I'm not too sure. Press this button and uh, now I gotta backtrack to the button. But that's okay because they've done a small bait which is uh, they drain the water while you were out of the room. <laughs> but fortunately there is a climb. There's always a climb. Where there's a way, there's a climbing path in this game. We've got some cool climbing paths, although I think the uh, the ones in the South Pacific definitely take the cake. Uh, so I would like to go through a couple of points I noted from uh, her from the CEO of Logcast, uh, her talk on virtual YouTube or oh, VTubers, I guess. I mean, I guess like one that's. Oh my gosh, the rats. Hold on, get, 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 get out, because I need to shoot the rat. Dang it, rat. Is there another rat? Oh, they're just chilling at the far end, along with a green crystal. Very nice. Um, yeah, a couple of points from her talk, as well as also some things that she said in the uh, in her interview with Kersha, who, um, or, or someone's going to say, oh, you're saying her name wrong. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't watch YouTube, I'm sorry. But, uh... She did a great interview because, like, like, it's weird for the CEO to even, like, you know, go deep in the lion's nest like this, knowing full well that, like, uh, you know, a lot of these people are not going to understand everything that she says, and they're also the target demographic, and they should be understanding everything that she says, and she doesn't get everything, so. Uh, a couple of things in her talk. One, uh, yes, the talk was renamed. It was originally about VTubers, and there's a little bit where she talks about Hatsune Miku being the first- Oh, my controller deconned. It's not that bad. Happens pretty quick. Um, I think... Yeah, okay, so what we need to do is we need to now go all the way back, throw the lever, which fills the water in- No, push the button, which fills the water in the other room. And it'll actually, no, it opens the trapdoor. And fills the water, something like that. I don't know, something like that. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it's kind of weird that she talked about Hatsune Miku being the first VTuber. Definitely VTubing comes from, you know, like the idol culture, which has existed in Japan for well longer than Hatsune Miku. Um, uh, it's this button. No, it's the left button. It's the left one. You can tell because it's off. <laughs> Push the button. It opens the trap door at the far end, allowing us to finally continue. And there's not much of this level left, so that's all good. But yeah, it's a bit of backtracking and a bit of like running around. And it's still, I mean, I love this idea of two levels or two parts to a level. These levels are large because they consist of these more kinds of complex combinations of scenes. And I, I, I really like that. Um, the next level, we'll get into that in a short moment. Um, this one down here, we've got the, the vat open. Um, but yeah, I, I, like, Hatsune Miku is not exactly a VTuber, because Hatsune Miku is not a person doing live commentary and playing video games. Hatsune Miku is, uh, an, well, I guess a figurehead, basically. A, a, a characterization of the Vocaloid software, which is literally like an algorithm that's, I, I mean, saying text to speech is like probably, you know, gross over like simplization. Um, simple, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I just saying long words? Um, interestingly, we've opened up into a, uh, I guess a swamped cathedral, which seems like it's a uh, home to another puzzle, but it's actually just like a weird, um, just kind of epilogue to this level. There's not really any puzzles going on in here. There's, I mean, you saw the exit just there for a moment. Uh, I'll walk towards it. Uh, it's just that there's goodies around the, the extremities of this place. And it also uh, hints at uh, some uh, more interesting level design later on, which we'll, we'll lean into. Uh, but yeah, like, like the Vocaloid software is effectively uh, a smart piece of software that allows users to write in um effectively music notation of some kind i think it's it's not midi it's it's probably a bit more involved um but effectively it's a music notation software that then synthesizes as an actual you know person singing there's a there's a robotic nature to the singing that's just partially due to the age of vocaloid uh and partially because that's what they wanted they're not going for absolutely lifelike they're going for that fun you know, robotic sound. Oh, hi there. How you doing? Um, but the most important part I want to say about Hatsune Miku is it is a smart algorithm. Uh, smart as in it's just, it's it's very clever. It's it's an algorithm that I'm like, dude, like, I don't, I don't know the first thing about, like, voice synthesis. I think that that's a good feat uh, to, you know, create that kind of stuff and uh, and go for it. I consider it very insulting when someone boils it down to AI. If I was also we've got the barbed wire at the bottom. If someone said, "Oh, you know, it's just AI that's vocal software," and uh, like I poured my heart and soul into writing like bits of it, it's like, yeah, that's that's a bit insulting to just like say that the the computer is just learning. It's like no, that's people programmers are smart, bro. When someone figures something out, and, and this made me, you know, suddenly shift my view on AI a little bit. I'm like, when someone can do something, and when, when a human can do something and can figure something out, you know, like, that is the kind of stuff that we should protect. And we shouldn't really let AI go quite overboard on doing those things that regular people do. Um, sort of, sort of. I don't know. Like, I still think there's a, there's a place... For like AI art, there's a place for AI music. Um, there's there's things like that, but when when it comes to like, hey, like writing the software itself, it's like when a human themselves figured this out, when a human can do it, it's it's no longer AI, you know, generated. Well, one, it, it never was AI generated, it, in the sense of it's not a you know a self-learning neural network. It's not a um, you know, something that involves training, training data sometimes, even if it's unsupervised, and, um, and, you know, effectively iterative learning. It's not, a, it's not that kind of neural network approach. It's just literally a very, very clever algorithm. Um, 
And, uh, and yeah, like, I don't know, I find that a bit insulting to just, like, say that, you know, AI. Uh, now, another person that they, they cited, and this one, more accurate when you're coming to the uh, origins of VTubing itself, although, although you know, there, there's a degree of Hatsune Miku is a very, you know, worthy thing to mention, but uh, is uh, Kazuna I. Uh, the I in Kazuna I is not 100% meaning AI, it, it's the Japanese, it's a Japanese word for love. So it's just like, it might be a pun, it actually might be both. But uh, for me, it's like, just because the letters A and I are in the name doesn't necessarily mean it's using neural, you know, self-learning neural networks, it's not doing that. Uh, this is just kind of an optional area that I'm jumping around, by the way. Um, but it's just curious, because there's like nothing in this spot, despite clearly this ledge being designed as if you could jump in here. Um, and yeah, you can obviously, like, walk around- well, you can't walk around here, actually, it stops. Interesting. Um... Oops. Well, it's the end of the level, anyways, so... Uh, walk out this door, it's just on the complete 180 of where we're at, and we'll hit a cutscene, where I can talk about VTubers afterwards. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, apparently no one can aim in this cutscene. I like how they they properly animated an action-y cutscene as well. <laughs> but I, I love this uh, this whole sequence. Who are you working for? What? You heard me. I didn't. Honest. What did you say? I said, who employs you? Ah, Miss Sophia Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Who's she? What does she do? I don't know. Really, I don't. I just shoot people for her. A commendable work ethic, I guess. <sighs> yeah. I put me hours into it, as me father did and his father did her for. Well, how old is this, Miss Lee? I don't know. Late twenties, early thirties. Right. Yeah. For some people, like yourself, we get a special bonus. I'm flattered. I mean. I could even be retiring from you. Then you might like to mind. The bell. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing moment. Amazing. <laughs> Interesting that, uh... The, uh, the, the things of note. It's... I don't think you'd actually, like... Mm, maybe if you're really being astute, you'd pick up on the, the um... The bits of that dialogue. This is, uh, one of the most annoying parts. I think I'm gonna try and save here. Uh, because even though it's the beginning of the level, that you're sliding down and you've just got- oh. I don't think I can- I don't think I can get this as well because I'm dropping down here. Oh no, I can- I can go back up. Cool. If I slide down a bit and then I jump right away, there you go. You can land on this ledge for shotgun ammo. It's just- it's a- it's a very annoying jump. But it's just here. And then uh, you drop down a bit more, and you're in water. So welcome to the Old Witch. The Old Witch. Um, but uh, it's not just any old Old Witch. It's an abandoned train tunnel. Funny how it just came out of Shadow Man. We did the exact same thing in London, nonetheless. Um, so this is a very uh, annoying level. It consists of multiple kinds of keys and locks that are very unclear to the player. Like when you're on your first playthrough, I just do not know how you're expected to find out about this. But suddenly you're up against these kind of thugs. They've got uh, the your controller dying in the, in the corner. Nice. There you go. I love how like some of our buttons come back, but not all of them. These are the damned. We had the the lost souls before, and now we got the damned. There we go. Uh, but. Uh, how do I describe it? It's like, these are two, do I mean, there's four exits here, but like, it's like two pairs where they just kind of wrap around. They lead down to two different train tunnels, and you've got all the stuff over here. Immediately, the first thing is, uh, there was a path that we have not actually uncovered, because I just walked right past it just to kind of show that, yes, we are in a train tunnel. And you can spot that green thing in the back, so it's not actually that bad. Um, but you probably have to... Take a guess that, yes, you can break things again. Um, so, yeah, Kazuna uh, I is, um... 
definitely one of the first examples of uh, modern day VTubing in the sense that, you know, she's a, a personality who uh, resides behind a, uh, a real time animated uh, avatar of some kind and she plays video games and does other kinds of things. That's, that's effectively what VTubing is. Now, how much of her, you know, like, presentation, we'll say, is AI generated, again, I feel like some hardworking individuals, or even a company, put in the effort to create motion capture technology. This is not using, uh, like, you know, reinforcement learning. This is literally just, you know, just, uh, oh yeah, this part as well. This is a real confusing part. So it's like, there's, there's a hole. There's actually two holes. And uh, if you pull this block by one, you'll now block the way here, but the other hole does connect here. And these blocks are also ladders. I mean, the, the, the wall kind of indicates it, but like, I really do that. Oh, you can climb back up. Okay, okay, it's all good. It's all good, you can climb back up. Um, but yeah, you gotta be on this, this one in particular. And that was you know, the ledge that I blocked, but suddenly now there's a ladder. Very neat. We're gonna see these blocks a bit as well, this, uh, this stream. Uh... And then we get into the whole realm of like, you know, there's other VTubers that exist, but, uh, but again, it's like, mm, how much of this was AI driven in the mass marketing sense of, you know, reinforcement learning algorithms? Um, I don't, oh, it's, it's a bit hard to see that there's a ledge here. Oh, it drops down. And this is a necessary ledge because you can see there's a key here. This key is absolutely vital. This is the... Maintenance key. Now, the maintenance key is not required for a rather long time, uh, depending on how you approach this level, but you'll eventually find that you did need it. And it's very annoying. What we need to do in this level is we need to pick up um, two keys and a ticket in order to continue on the level. Now, in order to... Actually, don't think we'll, we'll get the... Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll save it for a bit. I, I'm going to go this way. But effectively now, you need to somehow plot out the rest of the level. Never mind, you also needed to... I mean, uh, it's probably not that bad finding that one, you know, hole right at the beginning and going through that route to figure out how to get to the, the maintenance key. But now you're in this bit where it's like, okay, what do I do here? And as someone who played this level for the first time, or rather reminded himself of the level for the first time in a while, uh, I immediately thought I'd take a jump and I'd slide, but I'm at least like, hey, you know, there's a ledge I can actually stand on right here. If you're a bit careful, yeah, you can stand here. And you, you're meant to be able to jump this. What we now have are these, like, little train tunnels, and you'll see that at some point the train tunnel has a red light. And, uh, just to, just to showcase exactly what happens. If you go down any of these train tunnels for that long, um, well, the moment you hit the red light, immediate train jump scare. The train stops for you, but, uh, only, like, 10 centimeters too late. So, immediate death. You're not allowed to actually leave these train tunnels, which makes sense, because, what is this, Superman 64? We're not doing that. You got these little dogs. Oh, they're not little, actually. Oh, so hi there. Actually, they're not even that little, aren't they? They're kind of zombified. These guys have got, like, green arms. What are they? I was thinking it's sleeves, but no, their hands are kind of green. Like, these dogs are fairly... They've, they've been past their prime, past their use-by date. So, anyway, the maintenance key actually gets used here. So, you just meant to spot that, like... Yeah, so if you jump over here, you'll get the maintenance key. Now, to use the maintenance key, you'll open this door. It is very dark in here. Let's use a flare for the first time this stream. Got these Uzi ammo. Very nice. Did, do I even have the Uzis? No, I don't. I don't. But I got uh, basically every other weapon, which will be... Oh, I don't even have the harpoon. I've been picking up harpoons. The actual harpoon gun, not as much. Um, that's okay. 
pick up some more stuff. They're giving you a lot of stuff, and, and they don't take your weapons anymore. After the Nevada levels, they don't give you them. Well, they don't take your weapons anymore. This will turn on the lights for some of the, the place, but interestingly, um, you could probably spot it out of your eye as you leave here, so it's not that bad, but before you press that button, there was no power. Pressing that button gives you the power and drops this um, old penny. Just, just pops out right here, all the way at the other side of the room. You gotta notice that that's the case. Now, there's a lot of stuff that we can do by dropping down. Um, and in fact, stuff that you have to do by dropping down. You can immediately see that there's a, there's a, you know, a pathway that way. Um, and, uh, I think if you peer over that way, you've got the same kind of problem of, uh, yeah, like, you know, red light, uh, bah, bah, don't go that way. So, but then you're thinking, okay, well, I'll just drop down and something like that. But you got a doorway there, only for the train to sort of whoosh past a bit quickly. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Where you going? Where you going? Where you going? Come back. Um, so anyway, so this, this Logcast CEO sort of just attributed AI to a lot of things that AI really hasn't. And I'm using AI in terms of the buzzword of, you know, reinforcement learning. So every time I use that, it's just, a, you know, a reinforcement learning approach. Uh, models and data and that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of these big companies love AI because it's very heavily data focus and a lot of companies have been investing in data acquisition and that kind of stuff so you know it makes sense that they would try to capitalize on that um or at least uh capitalize on being data acquisition as much as they can this is a very weird room by the way you can see that there's a mesh wall there um and you sort of have to do like a jump forward make sure you're kind of facing the right way and then you can jump up and grab this now also confusingly there are two pathways out of this room one is locked by default also again you're gonna have to spot that you do a back jump here and you'll land on this ledge where there's another lad up here hi there how you doing but you can see that there's more like room over here there's more i think those dogs are down below actually uh is that a ledge there yeah there is um but if you keep your eyes peeled there was a i think you can mildly tell that's a door in the ceiling there's some more sort of ledges over there but it doesn't really count because did you spot it did you spot it there's a there's a mesh on the ceiling again we have take another swig mesh on the ceiling climb around drop down i think that dog actually no no he's not here We've now committed to go- well, you probably could slot yourself out of it there in this case. Uh, welcome to, um, a bit of a terrifying room. I'm gonna struggle with doing this one. You basically gotta drop down, try and find the, the ledges and the things that you can jump down and sort of chill around. I don't think there's any safety here. I think you just gotta take the full damage. And then grab the... Oh, we're not grabbing that ledge. We are... I think I need to do a backflip here. Backflip. There we go. We're good. Once you're out of there, uh... Well, this thing will eventually go down far enough. Eventually. Oh, there it goes. It stopped. It stops about there. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a terrifying room because you just... You're not, you're chilling, you're just going down suddenly, oh, things are going to try and kill you. You think descending wouldn't have been that hard, but definitely is. Uh, reach the bottom of the room and you'll find this health. This is actually the very, very bottom of the whole place if you somehow manage to drop all the way down and still survive. It's a bit dark, I don't think there's really anything down here, it's just where your rubble would end up. But you got the big health, so very nice. Um... But yeah, there were some weird claims, like uh, she said that currently in 2023 there are 20,000 virtual entertainers on the internet. And was it 20,000? I think so. And by 2030 there will be 50 billion. And now I'm not a stat- I'm not a statistician, but I'm just saying if there's 50 billion entertainers, then assuming every human on earth watches one like actively that is an average of 160 viewers per person that's 
every single person on earth, by the way. 160 viewers per VTuber is rather low. Now let's say, okay, everyone on earth watches 10 VTubers simultaneously, which is a bit of a stretch. Um, that's still 1600. Now 1600 is not that bad, honestly, but, and obviously some will centralize towards other kinds of, you know, some VTubers will do better than others, but like, uh, you're diluting the pool so much if there's 50 billion of them to choose from. Also, Twitch is not going to be happy with 50 billion people streaming uh, regularly. Um, you got the, the pool behind you to quench your thirst. Interestingly, you can stand here, and as long as you don't go any more forward, you don't get set on fire. Um, this whole room is now going to be a climbing the room room. Also, standing here stops the fire. It's just interesting. I'm hearing the dog, right? I think he's just in the next room over because that was, you know, right next to one room. We dropped down, it's now climbing back up, just a very similarly claustrophobic stack. This jump's always fun because it's like, there's a lot of weird jumps in this game in general, but... Uh... You gotta sort of do a bit of a side jump, hopefully you grab, that kind of stuff. Uh, also, this is another one of those blink and you'll miss it required moments of the game. You're supposed to backflip here and there's a switch there. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't spot that there was a ledge there, that switch is necessary because we need to go up there. We need to be able to go up and grab or go up that ledge. Uh, and then confusingly, also, they bait you because there's fire there. I just don't care. I don't care. But the, that fire gets you. I think it turns off after you, you continue on a bit. So... It's not the worst, but it's definitely like, okay, sure. <laughs> keep climbing, this room keeps going. Uh, and we'll eventually end up on this bit which is above the train tunnel. In fact, it's actually above the original one. Where, uh... Where I got the, the key. But stay up here for a hot second because you can very briefly spot there's a rat. I love the wind rushing when you're near the tunnels as well. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, so how are they how are they getting 50 billion people to, to live stream at the same time? Well, the answer is digital twinning. As in, you know, you can't be online 24-7. You're a human being. You've got to eat, sleep, drink, you know, have, have fun. Because VTubing is sort of a job. Like, this is, that's the reason why I only do two hours a week. I don't commit that hard. Uh, where am I? It's a bit high of a ledge, so. Alright, we'll keep that keep that on the, the surface for the moment. Uh, I'm gonna drop down. Cool, thanks Lara. Um, and then interestingly it's like, okay, well I'm on the higher part here. Where, uh, you know, the jump was. So if you didn't get the, the key, now's, you know. Also a decent time. Uh, since the train's gone past as well, there's no rush, but there is still a death train if you keep going too far. Back in this room, uh, obviously you would think you would go up through the trap door, but the game has silently one spawned some dot. Well, it didn't do that silently. I heard them a mile away. Um, but yeah, this is the part where the game doesn't tell you, like. It, it, it didn't really signpost anything of how you're supposed to actually continue. Like, you think the trapdoor is where you need to go, but that's a bit of a misnomer. As in, you do need to go through the trapdoor eventually, but you shouldn't go through the trapdoor until you remember, and not even remember. You literally can't even see this. I Like, I'm trying to, like, wrap around my head how the level design exactly has pointed this out to you, and I'm like, nah, man, I think you just gotta know. So go back up, jump forward, we go back all the way to our room. The same room. Now you may think, how do you get down? If you broke all these platforms on the way down, you know? Like you were falling onto these platforms that you were breaking. And the answer is, you don't. The platform that was coming down has created a platform, allowing you to, one, stand across it, and two, climb over to this ledge, which reveals a key! There are two keys you need, and you will easily skip this one if you just don't think of coming back like most people. Nothing tells you to come back here. This is what is referred to as a Solomon's key. Very nice, I guess. Uh, and this is the weird little ledge that I saw. 
But like as a player, it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, I might notice that, but I've got no idea where that comes from. So, uh, fortunately, we do not need to go there anymore. But unfortunately, we still need to go back to that one room, do that one weird jump again, and finally go through the trapdoor that I haven't gone through. I think this may be the last time we go through here, but when I was practicing through the level, I missed some items and then I had to like wander back again. And uh, yeah, yeah. When people ask like, "Why do you practice these levels ahead of time?" Uh, this is the reason. I'm trying like this legit. This eats up so much time trying to like remember where you're meant to even grab all these keys in this level. There's probably secrets as well, and I really do not know where all the secrets are, but I know where a handful are. So okay. So finally, third time's the charm. We're up here now. I can go through this little trap door. Let's let's drop a save when I climb up here. Um. So her main her main product that uh, Logcast CEO person is actually trying to sell is this idea of digital twinning, digital cloning. If you are too busy to stream twenty four seven, we can create uh, a AI companion, uh, and, and I use AI in the term of reinforcement learning because a lot of this is trained. It's like you know you, you iterate, you match closer to the original data, which in this case is I think the CEO said three hours of your voice. She said, do you know of eleven labs? Like, yeah, I know Eleven Labs, yeah. Eleven Labs is fairly impressive. I just wish it was open source. That's the only thing. I would love to do this on my own hardware. Instead, Eleven Labs forces you to pay for it. In the same way as ChatGPT, and in uh, perhaps the same way that Llama was meant to be, and then Facebook accidentally gave it to researchers for free, and researchers could not really be easily validated. And also someone then said, I put this into a torrent to help download speeds, and then... Uh, yeah, the, the, the can was open there. So I think Facebook doesn't really mind right now. Um, let's see. We've got... Oh, yeah. There's a little breakable ledge here. And you've just got to put your faith that this doesn't actually drop that far. Uh, we've got the fun, the blocks. So if you pull this block, it's now not blocking the platform that was there. I don't know why they need both a trapdoor and a block when the block is blocking the path. But sure, okay. Look legit, it's, it's just like that that would have been blocking it. You could have just shown that. Okay. Uh wander through here. We got a snaky corridor, as we always do. Um So yeah, so digital twinning, um now it's more than just you know, three hours of your audio uh in an attempt to recreate your voice. Um very impressive that we are at that stage where that's the case, and that's not even like me crediting like this thing. It's like you know, Eleven Labs is fairly good. Um, there's other things. I think there's a recent um, paper-based version that's like this is a new algorithm, but it does a better job in picking up the consonants. And that's something that I actually I really want to like toy around with, not to sub in as like, hey guys, I'm I'm subbing in. My AI is like taking over right now, um, but rather. Um, to uh to just like i don't know to toy around with i i like the idea of toying around with ai and using them for fun purposes uh let's not be malicious about any kind of ai stuff but just simple things and 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 like stuff that's fun to do and stuff that like you know like recreating someone's voice is something very novel i find so i like it um using it professionally maybe i might like you know in like 10 years i might not sound the same because like i don't know i'll be like voice shot <laughs> you know, you know, there's people on the internet all the time where it's like, oh, they just talk too much and the, you know, the voice is dead. Uh, so I want to try and maybe capitalize on that as much as I can, but like legit, I've got like, it's probably close to like 300 hours of me talking and me doing wacky voices. I could probably train anything based on that. Um, yeah, well, there were two buttons there. I'm going to gloss past the two buttons just for a moment. We have a room with three different doors out of here as well as also like some safes. I just love the safe. The water is there to throw you off. Because when you press one of these buttons, it opens a door, but only for a very, very brief amount of time. So if I press this close button, this opens the far two doors. You're then meant to bolt it, absolutely bolt it, turn around, run across, go to the water, don't step in it too much, and through the door, and you're up into this little safe room. Okay, we're in a little safe room. Now what? 
jump around and I did this in the wrong order because there's a, <laughs> there's a thing on the ceiling you could spot there. This slides down to, uh, oh, to where I was just then. The, the extremities of the corridor. So, whoops, I gotta run around again. Um, annoyingly, if you went, you know, if you didn't quite notice that two doors were open then, uh, your, your instinct is maybe to press the other button. The other button will lock you into a room that you haven't, you know, pulled all the right switches to fully progress. And it leads you back to literally the beginning of the level. Where you then have to somehow remember, how on earth did I get here? This is a very long, snaky kind of level. So go through the other door, and you can finally see there's an actual button. This makes the noise of something triggering, but you can't exactly... Oh, maybe you can see it. Oh, you gotta really be trying if you want to see that one. But you can see it. <laughs> and, uh, and just, again, we've got a little, little ramp to lead out, so... Um, but with, vi with with digital cloning in relation to a VTuber, this is when we get into the very dicey territory. Like, even though, yes, I can probably recreate my voice, you will never be able to recreate the things that I have experienced. You will never be able to truly recreate everything that I've done until you do a full brain scan of me and then you basically actually clone me. At that point, yeah, sure, sure. But we are not at that stage yet. Copying three hours of my voice or 300 hours of my voice will not copy, you know, the things that happen to me tomorrow that I might want to talk about on next week's stream. There are so many things that uh, AI training will not experience because I am a human being. I am a thing that like evolves over time. I change over time. Um, there's behavioral quirks that I really hope an AI like picks up on as well. Um, this button... Interestingly, like, this is a little... Well, this looks into the left room here. Interestingly as well, this uh, drops you out just above. Um, yeah, without any, like, actual previews of where you're going as well, I'm gonna say, just in case I've, like, not done the right thing, then I'm outside here. Uh, pushing the left button opens the close door, which you can see, but the camera's a bit close, so you can't actually, you know, you can't, you can't in a hundred percent tell, but it is the closed door. Uh, this one's a bit tighter to even get into as well. You'll just see it tries closing right away. Um, but you can tell I've done this right because that mesh platform that I was standing on, which is there, would be dropped before you hit that button. And if it's dropped, this is not a ceiling climb that you can do. And if it's not a ceiling climb you can do, well, you have to go in the water and exit this whole area. Otherwise, you can climb across and grab the item over there and then you can exit this area. So at least it's that. But, again... What a long trek. What an absolute long trek. And one where you can not activate the things in the right way and you're forced to go all the way back and start it again. Maybe not start it again, but, you know, this whole second part through the trap door is something you gotta climb all the way through. This is the second Solomon's Key. You need two Solomon's Keys in order to uh, vaguely continue on with the level. Um... But yeah, this level does, at least it leads in the right way. It's just, oh, it's so much work if you just miss one one singular key. You also notice there's been a bunch of doors that open up leading back to previous areas. But like, there was one door previously that we opened up and it was like, that doesn't get you back more than like 20 seconds. It's really not saving much time. Okay, now here's the part that I absolutely hate about this level is that you're meant to spot that this particular, you know, thing is lit up. And actually, I love the texture they use on this glass. I don't know what's going on here. You're meant to spot that this is lit up, okay? But that's not the right one. You're meant to go to this particular door, this particular wall, press the A button, and suddenly you can interact with it. All, none of these other ones you can interact with, just this one. If you use the old penny from ages ago, spits out a, a, a ticket. This ticket is the key to continue. This is the actual next thing you need to do key. That ticket. Now the other two keys I got come afterwards. So a uh, first time player one is really not going to have any idea to even use that. And two, you know, like you got to get multiple items 
So you'll go down this track, and then you'll just you know, not have all the items you need, and you have to backtrack. Uh, so this is the other, by the way, the other kind of flooded area. Uh, you can tell this is a different area because it doesn't have a pit at the bottom of the staircase. And the train runs in the uh, opposite direction. It's perpendicular, isn't it? It's not exactly opposite, but it's perpendicular. Um, now, like all good train tunnels, this is still, you know, red light district over there. Uh, but, we've got hi rats, how are you doing? So yeah, anyway, run up these stairs. Um, and we can actually continue on the level, which uh, leads... I love how you can very briefly see underneath the level there. Just because the stairs are not 100% perfect. It's very obvious on these ones in particular. You can see that there's like a bit of a gap there. They could have just made this ledge a bit thicker as well, but maybe like the level is too stacked on top of itself. Uh, which probably is a, is a great segue into this room. This is a... Uh, I don't know, just like a weird collapsed flooded room. Um, I don't think there's anything on the ground or anything here, but it's just, it's just here. But yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent against digital twinning in, in some cases, but yeah, for me as an entertainer, in the sense of I want to make entertaining content on YouTube, and and somewhat my experience with, you know, what I feel VTubers are about, you can't not you can't like recreate someone unless you can perfectly capture that person every single instant and constantly keep them up to date you i will never feel content with creating a digital twin that doesn't know everything that i've ever done or most importantly how many things i have never said on stream and i might want to mention later like there are so many things that they'll fail to do now when it comes to digital fingerprinting, which is a weird thing that was then mentioned in the interview, but not in the... Or it might have been in the talk. Um, that was a very weird jump, by the way, how you can... I'm pretty sure you can hit the, you know, the wall here. Um, also, just, just side note, it is at this point, if you get to this point, and you didn't even realize that you had to get a ticket. This, uh... Oh, hi there, rat. How you doing? How you doing, rat? This is where you use the ticket. Pop it in. And the machines light up and they let you go past. Look, Vara's angry. And so is this guy with a bat. Ooh, bit of a swat there. But again, lots of people are dropping, like, medium health in this level. And we're sitting on, like, 30. Like, I'm sitting pretty in the city with all this stuff. Now, uh... <laughs> I don't know why these things occupy so much more width than they look like they do. Um, but we got like a little door over here, and then it just kind of closed off. So, and it's just on fire. The bootleg fireworks get the water. Uh, so, so fingerprinting, I, I, I assume what they mean is that um, effectively adding enough kind of signatures and traces to your AI generated content that it is traceable. Either there's metadata, either there's um, weird influxes that are inaudible uh, to humans, but you know they're definitely in the audio. And anytime anyone re-records it, you could attribute it to the thing that you created. Um, it exists. It definitely can happen. I, I feel like um, you know uh, attributing is definitely an important part of AI stuff right now, while people are you know, misusing it. And effectively passing off things as theirs or utilizing content that wasn't exactly given permission to be used for AI training. That's certainly an important note. Um, also, I love how you just, again, spot. We're back just, you know, five minutes ago before the climb. There's a little staircase here. I'll leave you back up here if you want to. Uh, let's jump over this pit and let's continue on down this way. And where I'll continue to get hugged by lots of dogs in this level. But at least it's not snakes. I don't even think there's anyone who does poison in this level. We're pretty we're pretty exempt from the poison stuff. This guy is just chilling by his campfire and singing the campfire song. The C A M P F I R E S O N G song. Sorry. Yes. No, yes, that's the lyrics. Very nice. Um 
This, uh, this is unfortunately a very collapsed train tunnel, so it's not even like anyone could go down here. And then we've got this fun little train carriage here, which is, uh... Well, I mean, there's a little bit of a gap under it, but, like... Lara decides to have a bit of a bit of a moment when you try to go under there. Um, but yeah, digital fingerprinting, I get it, but again, one, don't, don't we have, like, copyright laws and things like that? Like, you could literally, if someone is using your likeness, regardless if it's copywritten or, or sorry, or if it's fingerprinted, it's like they're using someone and passing it off as you. If someone is sort of, cl you know, cloning your voice, your voice is still sort of your own personality. And I, I don't know, I feel like people shouldn't just be able to like clone your voice and pass it off without your, you know, your permission, I feel. If, you, if you're upset against it, you should have the ability to pull that kind of stuff. Um, is it copyright? Uh, I think, uh, you know, maybe we need a bit of precedent set, but I would say definitely your voice is your voice. Um, I definitely we get into the, the era of like, what if someone is very good at impersonating your voice, which can certainly happen. Um, I love how as well, like you'll just hear that door closed. Lots of, lots of just like, where on earth is the, the next bit of going? Um, oh. No, that is double closed. That is closed on top of me. Uh... Why is it double closed? I think there was meant to be a button. I was meant to press. Right? No, we haven't come across the button, right? Oh gosh, have we hit the gap in my memory? The bit of like, oh, uh, where do we go? Oh, we have, yes. Because you're not even meant to go here yet. Because this is a door where a key goes in. Now we've got these Solomon keys, but I don't have the thing that you get for trading the keys. But where? Where do you use the keys? Well, I mean, I've got a bit of a quick cut route to get back out, so maybe I'll keep exploring, but... Oh, no, I've forgotten the level design. I knew I'd get lost in this level. Oh, well. The next level's not as bad. The next level's not as bad. But this one, it's like... Because there is no second half of this level. This, uh, this is... As it goes. Um... We'll keep exploring while I rant more about just AI stuff. Um... Yeah, weirdly in the interview with Kersha, um, yeah, she sort of hit on, like, maybe a bit too many points, uh, and also, um, sort of, what's the term, when you say too much, usually you can, that's when you get, you know, in the hot water of, like, the things that you, um, you say. I think you're meant to go down one of these routes, it actually might have been down here. This doesn't look right. Nah. But I'm pretty certain there's another route, and I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. Where's it go? This is another one, full dead end. I think this is full dead end. Yeah. Huh. But hold on, this is, uh, this is earlier, isn't it? This is where the, the bit drops down on me. So this is actually not the... This is actually... This took me to the other train carriage. Yeah, the other drop, didn't it? Well, we get to see what it's like to jump backwards. Which is, uh, not actually that bad. Because the ledge is pretty flat for the most part. So it's, it's a pretty clean jump. Don't worry about that. Um... But yeah, yeah, she she effectively uh, hinted at the fact that this whole global VTuber award was a bit of a push for, you know, engagement with the logcast service and to push that name out and to really push all this kind of AI stuff. Um, the person who was the CEO person who did the interview with Kersha, um, like, it's hard to sound genuine when it's all tied with glorifying this kind of product and world and things like that. And then... 
she she did give a lot of answers that were just like i would love to know more you know please be open and tell me about all your data like that kind of that kind of degree like i i i get where she's coming from in the sense of hey if you're trying to make a product and you want to make it better you know you need feedback oh okay there was a door down here the whole time i love this this guy runs out of one door and then into the next one uh train took a little longer to come through than than it should have but yeah i love how i went through this whole path just to go oh yeah i didn't pick up the right key in the right order so press this button this reveals the other two doors as in the one that was also closed as well which you can go into for a little glowy very nice um but yeah yeah she did she did very stumble the 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 ceo person because well from a from a selling me the angle oh i forgot this room i forgot of this room this room oh my goodness this is they, they just dropped a straight old maze in the middle of my my uh my place we have buttons all over the shop um you press the buttons Doors open all around, you press the button, doors open all around, what's going on? The answer is nothing, apparently. That's the button we used to get in, you can't unpress that button or else you won't be able to get in. We wander around, we've got more buttons, I'm going to press all the buttons, we go around, what's going on? Well, uh, the astute viewer would have spotted one thing, which is very, very hard to spot. Every one of these buttons is right next to some kind of wall marking. You can see we've got this like handshake over there. Interestingly, the handshake is also over there. We have two handshake buttons. Um, and uh, interestingly, in another part of the level, there is multiple handshake buttons. That's Tomb Raider 2, I think. Um, oh, with the buttons? Or the, sorry, the, the random maze? I think Tomb Raider 2 has also got a random maze, to be honest. I think, I think every Tomb Raider game loves doing it. Um, so what you're supposed to notice is that the doors have an icon on them, and pressing the button triggers the doors with that icon. Oh, the game. The game, yeah. Uh, so pressing this button uh, rotates the doors with the fish on it. Interestingly, this activates three of them. We've got the weird little, uh, is that the fish? It's a bit smushed. It's hard to tell. Um, but uh, if you press the buttons right, so okay, so I need to spin the squiggly one, which is conveniently this one has a squiggly, but it's also got everything. Did you pre-order the remaster? I have not pre-ordered the remaster. I'm a, I'm a generally a no pre-orders kind of guy. Um, oh, but that's also the squiggly. Why don't I just press that? That's the squiggly. Um, yeah, I'm generally a no pre-orders guy, but I'm hoping it'll be good. I'm hoping it's just like, yeah, straight, straight old Tomb Raider. Uh, oh! I have pressed all the buttons right. Cool. Okay. Because this keeps going on for a bit. And then there's another handshake door just here. And it's like, uh, how do we, how do we do the handshake door? Because it's like, I don't know. There's two handshake doors. I don't know. This just keeps going on. It's just fire. Very, very nice. Uh, you've come in while I'm ranting about, uh, the Logcast CEO doing an interview with Kersha. Um about like AI and digital twinning and all this stuff uh, effectively I, I my criticism is like yeah the logcast CEO has very missed the mark on like what actually I would want AI stuff to do she even said some weird things like she was like oh what do you mean it's okay like it's standard for companies to gather all your data and it's like yeah I know that companies will do that I don't like it being standard <laughs> I really don't um am I hearing person walk around there's like a weird little door here and a squeaky squeak you can spot this thing squeaks it's like a moon i think squeak since there's not really enemies that shoot at you it's not actually that bad but uh yeah uh walk over here we've got two places for the solomon keys this is finally where we burn these solomon keys it will reveal these two sword doors uh, and there are Uzis. Oh, there's Uzis right there? Did I just walk past the Uzis? Show me where were the Uzis? Sorry, <laughs> I completely missed them. Oh no. Where were the Uzis? Were they right there? Am I just blind? Are they just... Oh, they are right there! Ah! Oh. 
Thank you for pointing that out. I would have walked right past that. The only weapon I'm lacking is a harpoon gun. I've got basically everything else stacked out, which is very nice. Lots of Uzi ammo. Um, I remember burning the Uzis and uh, my... Also, excuse me, level design. This, uh, this gets us the Masonic Mallet. Very important because that is, weirdly, the key. Ooh, ooh. Weirdly, the key for the next place that we need to get to. You like the PC version better? Um, I do, I, I like the PC version for the PC version niceties. Like, I'm not very good at these games. I abuse my quick saves so often. Um... So I, I would, I do prefer the PC version on that one. If I could save a bit more freely, maybe. It gets better over time, but I remember trying to really struggle through the the, uh, the PS1 version of the first game. And I was not very good at it. Also, there's a lot of these like kind of pits all around with the cracked floor. Except for this one. This one is not cracked floor. You're then meant to just spot that there's a ledge you can climb up. And you can properly climb into a room with a... With another item. This is an ornate star. It's entirely optional. But we'll showcase what, what it does in uh, not too long, actually. Not very long. Also, uh, despite it being used for a secret, getting it is not a secret. <laughs> I have not found a secret in either the last level or this level so far. And this one had six secrets, didn't it? Oh, it was five secrets. So, if you're going for all the secrets to get that, you know, that bonus level, good luck, my fellas, good luck. I should really work through the retro achievement set of, uh, all these games. And really, like, you know, actually, actually get good at it and actually find these secrets. Because I, I know of a couple in Tomb Raider 2 that it's just like, how on earth do you get there? Swimming back and forth, swimming back and forth. And, uh, we've wandered into a room... That conveniently uh, leads back here. So uh, I guess uh, you didn't quite need to go through the hallway that I went through to get here. Technically the game properly does lead you out here. But again, if you don't know, you don't know. Uh, so, yeah. Although in my case I probably should have known better. But still it's just like, oh, you gotta just climb through here again and climb around. Oh, I, I'm only knowledgeable because I played it yesterday. <laughs> the The reason why I played it yesterday is because I want to go through this game and showcase what I, you know, what I believe about it and how to kind of show what's going on without really wasting people's time. I don't know. I think people's times are a bit precious to watch some random <laughs> struggle around with Tomb Raider 2. Maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe, like, ask me again in, like, a year's time and I'll probably forget a lot of this, like, level design. Um, but I've only ever played through this game once, like, four years ago. Is it the, um, the one at the end where you gotta chase the guy through the room? That's technically two secrets, I guess. I'm gonna say it's this one. I'm gonna say this is your favorite secret. So, back in this room, uh, this is a door that is sort of hard to interact with. I got it pretty good. Yes, going back with the train, yeah, yeah. Use the ornate star, the completely optional item, and you get a secret as you walk in through that door, and then you immediately get ambushed by a guy. Walk into the room, and, uh... I guess the thing's on fire, and stuff like that. Um, you can jump up through the ceiling. Where, uh... Well, it's a bit of a, bit of a tight squeeze up here, but not... Oh, well, okay, now it's tighter. Um... Yeah, this log, this log car CEO, uh, she's missing her market. She doesn't seem to understand what people are doing. Um, it's, again, it was a bit insulting. She implied that, like, lots of companies gather data, so therefore it's okay for them to gather data, which it's not. Gathering data is, like, something that, like, more people should be incredibly aware of that big companies keep doing. And instead of going, well, nothing's bad happened to me so far while my data's been gathered, it's like, nah, man, like... <laughs> ChatGPT happened and is stealing people's jobs because people are, you know, very frivolous with data. And before you go, well, I never use ChatGPT, yeah, but... Have you ever posted on Reddit? Have you ever posted on, like, Twitter? It's like, you know... 
It's because, you know, this stuff wasn't attributable. You just say stuff on the internet and suddenly it's owned by a company and the company can then just like sell it out to API usage and someone scrapes all that for API purposes and then they, you know, they're using it commercially so they paid for a commercial license and by that point they've, uh, you know, they've used your data to the fullest extent to train an AI model and you didn't make a cent out of it. What did you get? Free chat platform? Bro, you could self-host to IRC channels yourself. There's, there's like so many like bits where like people don't realize that they're kind of getting a bit shafted in this data acquisition you know, stuff that's going on. So keep your eyes and ears about you. It's impossible to avoid everything. Like clearly I'm streaming on Twitch. I'm expecting Twitch to potentially, I love how you go all the way around there just to get a green crystal, by the way. Very useful for the PlayStation people, I guess, because you can get an extra save. But for me, it's been on full health for most of this level. I don't know. Come over here, and for some odd reason, this, uh, just takes a mallet? Use the mallet, break open the door, save, because it's been like five minutes, and you probably don't want to goof yourself up by doing that. Um, and wander through here, where we have a button. The mallet was just used for a button, to open the drawbridge, or the trap door that I failed to look at earlier. How long are we in this level, by the way? 47 minutes, and that's not counting any time I've quick-loaded. This is a butt-long level, and I wish I could have done it quicker, and it's still butt-long. Even after I've sort of traced out the path of where I need to go, and I still got it wrong a little bit, but it's like, I don't think this level is very easy to do quickly. Um, so we've got a path in the ceiling, which you may be wondering, where on earth is this? And the answer is immediately inside that train carriage we were in? There's a... We've got a front of the train carriage. I'll wander into the front. Okay, it turns out there's nothing in the front. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, get, get around. Uh, and then on top of that, this idea of, like, users need fingerprinting. Yeah, again, it's just like, no, you, all you need is a, um, you know, like, your identity. I don't think these VTubers would trade away their identity for, you know, necessarily an AI voice that recreates them but as a content creator you're always constantly creating and that's something that a lot of these ai algorithms are not um the most incredible at they require user input and that's that's something that all of these all of these ai companies have to really realize oh this one as well this this guy what you gotta do is you gotta shoot this guy a bit such that that door opens and then you gotta wander out before this door closes. Which you could shoot one of these guys to do that. But, uh... Yeah, that, you know, they're, they're copping a bit. Press this button, and the trap door to the, um, to the train reopens. And press this one, and the trap, and a door all the way... Back at the beginning of the level, not even the beginning, like one of the little side routes opens up. Literally, if I step to my right, I will end the level. I will go back, just to visit that train car again, because I think there might be something cool in the train car. Just for you, Mr. Tia. Just for you. Um, there's also some fun ones, like I think I remember walking down here, seeing the small health, and it's like, what? What a very bizarre drop. Very 90s style drop. I love it. Um... Yeah, if we go back here, I believe this is the door that we opened up. Actually, this might have been for one secret, just to reopen the previous room. And then to immediately exit in the same... ...area? Hold on, wait a minute. Not the same area. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it's, uh, it is one long trek. It's the last ride. Maybe I should have left the level. Where am I going? Where did I, how did I get myself turned around there? Like, hold on, that was inside the train car, which 
for reference, is bigger on the inside than the outside. Very nice. Uh... I know they exited out that way. Hold on, wait a minute. I, I've got myself very turned around. Hold on. So this door is closed because I hit the button. That is the way to leave this place. And then we go down here, which is where I was before. And we've now pressed the button to close the train carriage and get myself all the way back at the beginning but that door is now hard closed i'm just gonna load my save man it's not worth it to view the secret i'm sorry my man i'm sorry um okay so we'll do we'll do this normal again whoops i lost like five minutes of progress because i was curious but it, it would have actually been like a just a massive run all the way back to like an earlier part of the level it's just a track it's an absolute track um but yeah, like, I don't think that unsupervised AI is exactly something people would use. I feel like the what what every AI tool I've ever seen, you know, that people would, would really use these days is always something that's like, um, you know, relating with human usage. And uh, this, this logcast person tried to imply that um, even open source tools or fan projects that people have pulled out or developed are uh, all... Oh uh, yeah, you see? It changes the... the layout here. Because this went off to the side and walked back to the previous area. And now after I pressed it, it turned into this other kind of hallway. Wow. That's how easy it is to get turned around when, like, a, a room changes when you turn around. That's... that's why it's really hard to, like... Yeah, I don't, I don't really care about taking either of these guys out, to be honest. I like how he does a run, though. But yeah, nah, literally where we're getting. Jump down here and uh, Lara sticks the landing. <laughs> Very nice. Apparently getting kidnapped was part of your plan. So, you must be after Miss Lee then. Ah, British Business. person. Not pleasure. Though obviously not for revenge, man. You've hardly got the face for that. And you have? <laughs> How moronic a question is that, eh? I don't even have a face, man. I don't have a face, Came man. That's me, I R L, man. What do I get, eh? But Miss Lee's cosmetic company and her lab assist job. No experience necessary. Good wage. Accommodation with it. Aye. Locked in a flotation tank for days on end in some fetid syrup. And when we come out, because lots of us applied, like, no face or flesh, man. And a boot and doing the waste disposal shoot here. Presumed deed. Some kind of failed experiment, then. Oh, ta, very much. But I, and for added insult, when I tried to take my own life, I found it just didn't work. You mean Sophia's testing some sort of immortality power, along with her own brand of facelift? Why, I, man, everlasting beauty. She's obviously not fully worked it out yet. But she takes the best results for herself. See, I don't care what your business with her is. You can't be any more shiftless than what she is. So I'm gonna go out of my way to help you. That is, after you've done something for us here, like. Very generous of you. What do you want? A bottle of that mummy preservation stuff from the Natural History Museum. Embalming fluid? Aye, for rotten flesh, you can't whack it, man. The museum's pretty interesting, I'm told. You'll like it. So why don't you go yourself? One of them Egyptian lassies there is a bit pissed off, like, that uh, she didn't get immortality the way she wanted it. And seeing as we've done better than her in that department, I didn't care to imagine what curse we could get given any worse than what we've got already, like. You'll be fine, though, pet. You die easily. Thanks. <laughs> what a what a very fun, fun cutscene. And, and a, what a, what a strange premise. So, uh... So, so yeah, just to recap, uh, this person who runs a cosmetic company, uh, in her twenties, uh, hires mercenaries, of course, as, as you do, and, um, apparently, uh, for literally hundreds of years, oh, 
at least a hundred years, has uh, effectively experimented on people, uh, failed in some way. They've kept their youth, but uh, the skin's sort of fallen off, as you do. And uh, these people are upset. They want some embalming fluid. And they'll let me know how to get there. So, disregard going through the right door and we'll go through the left door where uh, the ceiling will come down. You just got to spot that there is a ledge here that you can climb through and almost, you know, lose your head off. But uh, this will give you a uh, button. What does this button do? Um, let's have another say and let's have another look see, shall we? Uh, this is Lud's Gate, which is, uh, um, I, I, I'd, I'd call it a two-part level. This is actually a bit of an oversight over, um, you know, uh, part of the later stages of the level. <laughs> it's a bit of, bit of barbed wire, if you will. A bit of barbed wire everywhere. Should I have even jumped down here, or? Oh, yeah, no, you can see, you can see right there. There's a little tiny ledge. Little tiny ledge. We got the the long climb left. That doesn't even look like it goes anywhere. Um, but yeah, interestingly, this is a museum level. There's a secret here. It's a secret. How many secrets are we dealing with? Six. And a bunch of secrets in this world. Let me tell you that. All for health. And for flares. Oh well. Um, and I believe there's an exit little hole right here. There we go. Uh, but yeah, moral of the story is, uh, yeah, I think we all know what AI tools we'd even want to use or not want to use. As a content creator, I am sort of uh, flabbergasted at... Oh, sorry. As a developer, I'm sort of flabbergasted at how much this person thinks AI powers everything. How much they've called every single freaking smart thing anyone has ever written for a program as AI, which is very, very, a bit, it's a bit disingenuous and a bit insulting. I don't, I don't really, you know, <laughs> you, you could do better to attribute things to neural networks, which is the actually accurate thing that every single company should be saying. Um, like, can you guys stop saying AI in the sense of it's artificial intelligence? Because sometimes it's not, it's not really that intelligent or it's literally just a trained model. Like, you know, I get it. I get, I get what you're doing, but it's like, yeah, no, like it could be a little different. Jump back and we're back up here where I think, uh, oh, that's the edge of the, the room. I think that was it though. I press this button and we should be able to climb back on top here where, ah, yes. Yeah. 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 So, if I went the proper way, oh, there's that. If I went the proper way, uh, well, we'd end up in this room, basically, where I'd be climbing past the brambles of the, the, the barbed wire. Now, there is certainly, what a thrill. This is classic. There is a ledge, I think. Can you spot that there was something right behind you? Trying to figure out where you jump from. Nope, not quite there. I could probably do a save on the let. Nope, that tabs out. I keep forgetting that tabs out. Oh, oh, but I can, I can see the ledge there. Okay. Ooh. Nope. Not quite that ledge. Maybe I could just save mid-jump, just so I'm like, at least mid-jump and I can like, figure out what I'm doing from here. Oh! Hold on. That looked a bit okay, hold on. Let me just back up here. Oh, you see that? We're almost there. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> not that one, not that- <laughs> Not with that kind of effort. Okay. But almost there, almost there. It's a bit higher. So I'm getting higher. Oh, but not that high. 
that's a very that's a very mean jump because you just you can't exactly see where you are. You're just you're just gonna have to take a guess. It's probably this line. That line probably feels about right. Oh, where I'm grabbing onto after this jump seems a bit more correct. I don't know. I really want to give it a go. I really want to give it a go. Hey, there we go. Not a secret. It's just shotgun shells, guys. It's not a secret. Yeah, not actually a secret. It's just, just a place for shotgun shells. Okay. We're good. We'll climb up. We'll climb up a bit more. Uh, but yeah, fortunately, this level has two halves to it. So it's not a... It's not a complete... Like, it's it's not as bad as the previous one. I, I do prefer this one a fair bit more. Um, if anything as well, it's actually... It's a little confusing just how this level is laid out. Like, where on earth does it all end up? It still does have one of those kinds of keys. The ones where if you miss it, good luck backtracking to get it. It's like, it can make the key a bit more clear and pronounced. You know, just so I don't accidentally miss it. Because, uh, unfortunately there's a bit of that. But you can spot around, check it. Oh, you can't, you really can't see what's going on. Uh, what's your favorite level? I've really enjoyed the, um, it was in the South Pacific. The, um, the, uh, the second level in there? What was the second level? We did it last week, I've completely forgotten. Um, <laughs> uh, but it, it was the one before the rapids, I remember that one. And it was, uh, it was very neat. Um, the rapids one was actually pretty good fun as well, I did like the rapids one. I really dig that whole world. That world was great. So, I'm gonna go with that one. But yeah, I this is, this is how you can tell I'm, I'm a fake fan. I, I, I can't even really remember my levels, but... I like Tomb Raider. I just, you know, I, like, this is one of those games I never grew up with. Mandubu Gorge. Is that... Is that the level I'm thinking of as well? Hold on, do, do I have my old saves? It would have been that one, actually. It would have been that one. No, that is the the kayak level. The kayak level is Mandubu Gorge, yeah. I love how we crawled all that way just to get to um, shotgun shells as well. I love how we drop in this room and we've actually got like a mild stealth moment when this guy doesn't see you. Now, unfortunately, his mate um heard that also, I just want to add, uh, we're back to killing museum guards. We're not killing, like, one, we were killing those. Actually, actually, if it makes you feel better, they're all immortal, those fellas. All the people we killed in the last level, we didn't actually kill. How can you never play Tomb Raider as a child? Um, I would say for me, I wasn't exactly a PlayStation, like, I owned a PlayStation as a kid, but the console I really had the most games for was, uh, the PlayStation 2. I'm a bit, like, too young, um, like, my mum would very, like, stick to the age ratings. So, Tomb Raider would often fall into the M15 plus camp for us. I don't think it was ever cheaper. Um, and, uh, or, or not, not cheaper, but like, you know, lower age rating. Um, and uh, I was not 15 until 2011. So by that point, uh, effectively Tomb Raider 2013 was sort of around the horizon. Um, so I ended up playing Tomb Raider 2013-ish after it came out, but I also uh, just picked up the older ones on Steam at around that time. And that's when I, I'd first played them. Um, so it's about 10 years ago. Um, but what I really digged out of them is that this is kind of like 90s level design that I super duper dig and enjoy. <laughs> I super duper enjoy um, this level of exploration and... and um, some great puzzle solving, but also just environmental puzzle solving. This room in particular, I mean, they played the music and it certainly highlights that you gotta do some thinking, but it's very interesting because effectively one platform keeps raising and another platform keeps lowering and there's no indication this very moment that that's the case. But, uh, go up this ladder uh, and uh, we'll witness another room. Also, yeah, I, I, I didn't even mention I was pushing this one box. Um, and uh, you can see that there's a little, you know, there's different floor textures for the box. Um, so obviously you're like, okay, we'll push this box onto this button. Is it a button? It's just a floor texture. 
But you can hear some noises, so you've done something right now. You can climb on top of this box and uh, use it to climb into this little crawl way. Um, but yeah, my other concerns with some of the other levels is, uh, again, stuff happening off screen and you've just got to reorient yourself and figure out, again, where things, you know, did anything change. Um, so in this case, you should notice that there was a platform there on my right that's now gone and this main platform has now appeared. Uh, but you also still have the ability to climb over here. I mean, sort of had that already, but... Gotta do this, like, weird little drop. Just to get over here. But yeah, this is, this is probably a lot of, like, climbing work just to, you know, hit this one button. Should make playthrough guides. I sort of do, um... You know, I, I, I do make my, uh... My streams and, and even my older Let's Plays um, as sort of a, a, you know, a visual walkthrough, you know, with some commentary. I, I, I always like discussing just like, you know, topics at the time as well. So perhaps people might not like that some of the topics are or just contextual at the time. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I've, I've mildly thought of like making like walkthroughs and things like that. Um, it's a lot of effort, but... Uh, I feel like, at least for Tomb Raider, some people have definitely got, um, you know, maybe a bit more experience than me at this kind of game. Um, but yeah, no, it would be pretty alright. Um, it would be pretty alright. So all that did is that that lowered a... thing, was it the one directly above me, was it? No, it wasn't. It came up on screen, I missed it. Oh well, but pressing that button is exactly what you need to do. But you now need to be able to climb up a bit further and uh, the level doesn't exactly allow you to do it. But this ledge here is very useful because you can actually bump up onto this little platform up here. This is a very Tomb Raider 1-esque thing. One, because we've got the Egypt vibe going on again. Um, and uh, this is the worst <laughs> signal jump I've ever seen because you can clearly see that there's a crawl space to my left but if you think that this is the jump you'll be sorely disappointed and you'll lose about half your health it's 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 a bit cruel but it's just that slight bit out of the way so don't be baited by that you got to go through this crawl space and crawl back to where we were just to be able to continue the level somewhat That's not too bad, because the music plays again, so you know you're along the right lines. And <laughs> that's right, you crawl, you drop down, you crawl, you climb, you swing around, you slide down, drop through a ledge, and we're back in the hallway from the beginning. Now, your door is still blocked, you haven't activated anything. What you have to, uh, sort of unlearn or remember, is that the center platform is a different button. So as you move the block back to this button, uh, you'll notice no sound. There's there's no cue, and I, I, I do wish there was a cue uh, to, t to tell you that yes, indeed, pushing the block over there did indeed switch which platforms raised and which ones lowered. But yeah, just note the floor textures and just try the blocks. You'll you'll eventually figure it out. We do a climb up here. And, uh, this is one of my favorite, like, bits that's a bit cruel, because if you try jumping at this one, like, just normally, you're gonna hit your head on the ceiling. Really, no matter where you go. And again, you're probably gonna lose half your health, so... That's why I saved right there. Personal experience, I tried it. Uh, the trick is, uh, just, who cares, literally run for it. Oh, no, never mind. Don't, don't, don't run for it. I think you maybe run for it on an angle. Run for it on an angle land on the other ledge. You can jump back though. You can jump back because the ledge isn't above you there. This will close the door that uh, you know we, we went into to push that uh, earlier box. Just that one. But now we have a proper ladder to climb up all the way. All the way around. And this will get us out of this room. I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, it's like, oh, this is not going to be 2 hours 20, and it certainly won't, but goal is at least we'll beat 3 hours. <laughs> uh, me with the long streams, it always happens. 
Um, so now we're up on this ledge. You should be able to spot a little bit of platforming off in the corner. Oof. Once more for the front. Oof. Uh, and now we got one more. Oof. Just for shotguns. Oh, and there was another item right behind me. Double check. Hey, more flares. We can we can never use enough flares. How many flares am I chilling on? The Wizard 101. Very, very nice. Um, speaking of 101, it is... I don't know what 101 means. Uh, but, uh... Or... Oh, I've, got, I've, I've got another topic that I just want to briefly mention, but uh, I'll wait until I've climbed across here. Because we have... That's right, a leap of faith jump onto that one ledge that we saw earlier that was just slightly out of our reach. Now, here comes a very, very important part. Um, you probably want to save right here because you can see there's a ledge there and then there's the actual, like, an important item that's not like, you know, Uzi ammo or anything. If you fall, if you stand on this ledge, I'm really curious because I, I was like, I fell down. I was like, oh, what's on that ledge? Thinking that the ledge was um, really the way to go. Oh, sorry, the ledge was like a secret that I was like getting, but no, the ledge is actually the way to go. If you drop down here, you'll go down this long tunnel where Lara is constantly getting sucked down that way and I can't actually like unturn, but... If you crawl up and around... You're in this one room where, hey, look at that! The real treasure was the harpoon ammo inside us all along. Lots of harpoon ammo, man. And we got another, um, oh, I guess that's not going to drag me back because this is probably an exit. <sighs> is there an exit up here? Uh, I don't exactly see it. I still don't see it. You sure this doesn't lead me somewhere else? I'm getting forced back, so this definitely seems... The, yeah, the other way as in going on the high ledge is... <sighs> the right way. I'm just curious what dropping down exactly does for your psyche. Um, oh, maybe... Okay, so that will drag me back, but this will uh, go around here. Hang on, this is... Uh... Oh! This is... This is much later in the level. You just skip half the level if you drop down. As in... As in you'll, you'll spot this in like 15 minutes time. Okay, so, slide down here. Forward jump. Grab. That is how you get through that. You'll grab the actual bombing fluid. It's just chilling here, you know, on this weird ledge next to some sarcophagi, as you do. Um, ah, oh, dude, that's so... That's so strange that that actually is, like, you know, halfway forward in the level. That's probably... I probably did that on my first playthrough. Um, no. Well, time-wise you do get rewarded, but, um, secret-wise you don't, because you'll be missing all the stuff over here. But yeah, I, I, like, I didn't drop down before when I was, like, testing this level. I was like, oh yeah, where do you, how do you, what happens when you drop down? And then I was like, oh yeah, I noticed that was, uh, yeah, a different point in the level. Effectively, this level consists of two halves, and that sort of jump straight into the second half without like, finishing the, you know, <laughs> without getting the embalming fluid, first of all, so rip these people. Well, not rip, because they don't die. It is a bit confusing. It is a bit confusing. I actually, there's a, um, there's a guy on, um, on YouTube, I forget the name of him. He doesn't have a ton of subs, but just look at, like, uh, like, try and search a video, Tomb Raider 3 Levels Explain. He's got some isometric maps of the levels and he draws basically lines of where all the jump paths and the secrets are and explains them all, uh, sort of three minutes at a time because that's kind of the amount of time you need to explain the levels. And, um, and it's like, it seems a, a fair bit simpler and a fair bit more manageable, but it's still like, yeah, no, like, you are a bit of a rat in the maze exploring around all these levels and things like that and uh yeah when it's at its worst yeah tomb raider is crazy confusing unfortunately that guy has not made a video in a year since he did this one so i do wish that he continues and he comes back 
to do Tomb Raider 4, which is probably the last one that people care about to, you know, make another one of these videos on. Uh, drop down through this ledge after we got, you know, some more rockets, things like that. And, uh... I don't want to drop down right there, do I? Nah, I want to... Climb, because of course, of course. Again, spot the ceiling. It just... Anytime it looks a little... Mm, jumps a little weird. It's always the ceiling. It's always the ceiling. I'm glad the camera's perspective makes it, you know... A bit more dawning what you're doing as well. Uh, this does not go all the way, but it gets you... Close enough. It is very high as well. It's a very, very high ledge. Um... This one's fun as well because it's just like, you know, you're you're sort of on track to uncover a secret. I think you do a, a regular forward jump here. You'll land on the top of the Sphinx. The Sphinx is back, baby. But uh, be careful because uh, how on earth you get down this without like sliding down all the way? I think there is one that little like crawl space over there behind the vent. That's where we were right at the beginning of the level. That's where we were. What you need to spot, I think, is that there is a... I mean, you can see there's a ledge over there. I think that's probably your ticket to salvation. I think. It seems a little weird. I might as well save and we'll, we'll do it. I know there's a way to get down, but I'm just trying to... Yeah, spot that crystal. Oh, Ooh, that's a bit... That was a bit of a ledge. That was a bit of a, bit of a drop. Um... We have just like another look around. There's nothing on that side, although there's still the ledge. But you see there's the crystal over there, which is definitely a sign. Um, but there's also a little tiny ledge over there. That makes me think as well, maybe um, maybe the secret is actually to jump down that way. I'm going to do something a little weird. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to slide down. We're going to... Oh, that's sticking out. It's, it's just sticking out right there. And I'm not, I'm not at all at the right angle to get that. We'll take another go. We'll take another go. Um, but like that ledge there is like kind of weird looking. I think maybe you can stand. Nope, you can't stand here. And you definitely slide a fair bit down. You'll definitely almost live. <laughs> You'll definitely almost live. There is a, a decently smooth way to actually really get down the Sphinx, but... Okay, uh, forward jump. I'm probably going to hit the... Yeah. This is going to be a very curious jump they want me to do. Because I see... I see this platform. That 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 one platform there, if I can just slide down onto it, that'd be cool. That would be neat. Um, so it's like, how much forward can you do this jump? I'm going to jump from like the back side of this. Oh! Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not far across, but, or I'm, I'm, I'm Lara Croft, but not far across. Um, but yeah, ah, uh, that's, this is the other joy of Tomb Raider, is, is, like, trying to, you know, really toy, toy around with the levels a bit and, like, really understand some of the more obscure parts that they actually want you to get. But you gotta keep your wits and just notice, notice the platforms, notice the tells, there you go. Well, almost, almost. I think I, I I could have been sliding a bit longer. So, all right. But I've got the I've got the the position, which is about like here, two steps back, straight towards that crevice. Or I could just immediately land. Hi, Lara, you're stuck. There you go. Immediately land in this one bit with a small health. Okay, it's just it's just chilling here. It's just chilling. Okay, platform. I can see that ledge. That ledge is where we want to go. Ooh. I'm now going to slide forward onto this ledge. Now we're on track to get that crystal. Along with two rockets. Neat. And that's a secret. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, at what point does this count as a secret? Because, uh... That's a bit gnarly. And uh, yeah, if you if you miss the embalming fluid and you miss the entire... Oh, I don't think there's anything going to be up here. This is going to be a pain. Um, ooh, ooh. 
How do we get down? I think I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to jump! But I'm probably gonna jump back over here and it looks like this is a little ledge I might be able to like... Uh, I'm gonna see if I can double grab. Nah, Lara decides to not double grab. Rip her neck. We'll probably gonna need to awkwardly jump back to the... Back to the back of the, the Sphinx. Maybe we can get some luck off the, uh, the edge of the Sphinx. You may be able to do a, like, a cheeky, like, swatting back and forth jump. I don't really think you gain much out of that, though. But yeah, if I, if I go about here, I'll probably be fine. Oh, actual flat ground as well. Like, you, you just need to grab your way as you slide down. You should be good. Uh, there is nothing on this side of the Sphinx. It's just a complete corner of the room. Very neat. Um, but yeah, yeah. You, you, once you get the embalming fluid, you really just have to drop down in some way. It's just that there's a very kind of nice ledge there. Um, you seeing that, by the way? There's a bit of a no draw going on at the top of the screen there. That's uh, interesting. What's with the no draw over there? There's a lot of bits where it's just like, oh, there was no texture there for some reason. Hmm. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh yeah, yeah, these are all museum employees. Like, I felt bad about, like, you know, shooting all the, the, well, the bikies come at you with a, you know, a baseball bat. Are they actually London Museum staff? Because I don't remember London Museum staff having guns. Could be late at night, though. But, like, yeah, Lara, it's like, these are just regular people. Let them escort you. Just be subtle. Uh, here's a fun little puzzle to get out of here. You're like, hmm, there's a door. Well, if you look up, well, there's a ledge. Jump up, we can grab the ledge. But the ledge doesn't really show much. But it does show that there's this block here. You can pull the block out by one. And uh, remember, these are the weird ladder blocks. They're secretly ladders without you actually knowing. Um, but yeah, follow my steps and uh, you'll definitely... Uh, you know, climb your way out of here. It's a, it's a curious bit here where you just kind of climb up a bit and then it's like, oh, it's a bit of a dead end, but you got a little hidey hole there. So. so the topic I wanted to briefly mention was we are at the end of the Formula 1 season. As of uh, 22 hours ago, the final race uh, of the season started and uh, concluded. And yet again, for the 19th time this year out of 22 races, Max Verstappen of Red Bull Racing fame uh, has won the race, making him uh, a crazy record holder. He has lasted the entire season without crashing his... Well, I mean, he's hit people, but, like, his car lasted every single lap of every race, making him the only person to do that. He led a thousand laps in one singular season. Uh, 19 wins makes it the most number of wins anyone has ever done in the season, let alone the percentage of wins, because there's more races, so there's more opportunity to win the most. Um... And uh, out of the three remaining races, when two are won by your teammate, that leaves all but one race won by your team. Very, very impressive stuff. Um, so pull that block out by one or two. Two, actually. We pull this one out by two. Um, but yeah, overall, as a season of Formula One, uh, me being following it for, like, I think this is my fourth year following it. I watched it at the end of 2019, and I've really been sticking on here. Um... It's like, yeah, you can totally imagine how watching the same guy win the race 19 times out of 22 and hearing the Dutch national anthem and then the Austrian national anthem back to back constantly. Yeah, you know, it can get a bit tiring. What was exciting was that there was a really good bout for the fourth place. Uh, even second and third were a little bit heated between Lewis and Checo. It was a bit on the fence, but uh, seems to be very well decided here. But at the very end... Uh, Fernando Alonso came fourth purely by countback with the same number of points as uh, fifth place, which was, um, was it Charles Leclerc, I think, got fifth? Um, and then Lando Norris, one point behind at sixth place. That's pretty close. That's a real close finish. So Through here, we finally end up back at the start of the level. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Keep your wits about you and try to spot the very arbitrary bit of level that the game, you know, required you to get. Also, uh, you're probably very screwed if you somehow did not pick up the embalming fluid on your way back here. Like, if you if you drop down, you'd be more forward in the level. You just need to know that somehow you interact with this. 
pop it there. They're like, cool, you did it. Um, and the door opens. But this just leads into the second half of the level. It keeps going. It's, it's... <laughs> these levels, they never end, except for the next level. We drop down a pit, and... We are now right where this is. This little, little speedy drone. Now, I don't have the harpoon gun. I don't have the harpoon gun yet, so this is going to be a little awkward. But while you're on this thing, you'll see that I've got my harpoon ammo clocked in the corner. And you can actually shoot with your harpoon while you're on this thing, which is very nice. You actually shoot a bit more uh, quickly as well. What is this little tiny, <sighs> tiny room? You can you can duck for air. Oh, hi there. How you, how you doing? This thing uh, steers around pretty alright. You just kind of point and hold the, the jump button. And you'll, you'll steer around. You'll spot some crafty little things and secrets like more harpoons there, apparently. Maybe I should shoot the crocodile. Wherever he's gone. There you go. Should be able to get off and grab these harpoons just before I run out of air. This, this part of the level will give, you know, if you hate water levels, you are going to get some mad anxiety from this level. I'm sorry as well. Um, because it's just like, oh my gosh, you got a third of your air left. Like, this thing, you know, you get like 40 seconds of air. That's plenty of time to duck around and uncover something. But, uh, it's certainly, you know, not enough to do everything that you really want to do. I just shot that crocodile just to get, like, one more harpoon shot as well. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, harpoon ammo is not as plentiful as I'd love it to be. Uh, is this, is this a, okay, there's Uzi ammo, sure. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna ask me to, oh no, we're good. I was, I was hoping it wouldn't, uh, grab onto the vehicle, um, here. Uh, but yeah, I really do hope that the next, uh, year of F1 is a lot, like, you know, closer, obviously, uh, I guess a dominant year isn't necessarily emblematic of, uh, more dominance, um, but it seems that perhaps there's something very tricky about how the car, uh, how all these cars had to fit within the regulations. Because a lot of the teams like Mercedes and uh, Ferrari has been struggling uh, in, you know, slightly more years. Um, Red Bull have not been struggling. They have continued to keep up. And now it's like when everyone drops back. Oh, look, more. More. St oh, whoops. <laughs> Shot one. Um, but when, like, everyone's, like, dropping back. And then it's like your team is, like, just still dominating. That's pretty big. Um, there's still grounds for Checo. If he, even though he got second, it's like, yeah, you, you know, given your car is crazy dominant, and you still only got, like, second by the last, or, oh, he, he had second after Las Vegas. He did have second by Las Vegas. But it's like, you really should have cemented it fairly soon, and you should be crazy dominating more often. But there's so many races where, like, he, he dropped out. He either crashed out, or, you know, I had, like, a weird pit strategy, and just really fell back. It's like there's a lot of weird low points to no points placements that Checo had. And uh, that should be something that like people should 100% react to in that camp and be like, yeah, like, you know, we got to boost this guy all the way up. Um, I follow Alpine. Alpine did uh, all right. They are bang on middle of the stack team. They are not McLaren or Aston Martin. They are not... Uh, who got six? Oh, sorry, sorry, um... Yeah, yeah, well, I think Aston Martin got fifth, actually, so they would have been sixth. Uh, they're not Williams, or Alpha Tauri, or Haas, or Alpha Romeo, so it's not like... You know, they're that bad, it's just... Yeah, swim up through here, and, uh, this is... Looking familiar, ain't it? So, uh, we gotta leave this one behind, but there's that whole, kind of, beginning part. Um... That was just there. Lots more harpoon ammo all over the shop there. Uh, interesting, I just want to note, this is not only just under the, um, the museum, but also under the, the damned, like, their hideout, their base. This is under that. It's like, why, why is this so deep underwater? Pull this lever, and we should be able to swim up. Uh, in a different area, although we got a nice little air pocket here, so very nice. Um, and I love how this is, again, a <laughs> whole second half of the level, it just keeps going. 
Uh, if we swim down here, this is where that, you know, pushes us out of the old part there. Um, I probably swam right past the opening, didn't I? Because that's not really... It's not really anything back here, and it's not like, you know... It's not like you need that. Oh, hi, hi, yeah, thanks. No, 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 I want to I get off this. I want to get off the ride. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lara. Um, I don't know, my Alpine boys did alright. They kept trying to stir drama at the beginning of the season that like they were going to keep crashing into each other and it only happened once. It only happened once. It was probably the most tragic thing that could have possibly happened. I like how I swam right past this door. Um, very tragic at Melbourne that they, they just crashed into each other, but sure, you know. They moved on and uh, whatever results they got then wouldn't have, you know, really affected their team standings. The overall driver standings maybe would have pushed one of them over, but team standings, nah, that's fine. Now, we got this kind of sentry guy, and if you manage to sneak up all the way on him, uh, there's apparently a secret involved. I'm not good at this game, let's just, let's just say that. Press this button, and uh, we will now jump right back into the fray to find that door, wherever it was. I think it was a little further back. Yeah, there it is. And we shall enter... The waterway, which also closes the door behind us. This is now that weird little pit that we saw ages ago in the secret. Uh, how I would explain this is, yeah, it's a little bit, you got a little bit sneaky. There's a couple of, uh, little, there's a, this is a secret right now. Just for, uh, these are deagle ammo, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing really chill in there though, but sure. Uh, you can poke your head out, but I might set off the alarms if I'm standing in the wrong place. I think if you're standing closer to that guy or the other lad standing next to him, they'll definitely see you. But uh, if you're just swimming around, they probably won't see you. Head over to uh, another hidey hole that's just nearby and you'll spot a lever on the back wall here. Which reveals something. Somewhere. Uh, also, small health. Just just in case you need more small health. Those green crystals are certainly stockpiling me so much. So, Where are we going? Yeah, no, overall, um, F1's in a good spot, I guess. It needs a bit more, um, you know, let's get, let's get some of the crustier bits out. But overall, it's like, yeah, you know, if there's one thing, if there's one thing I had with this year is that, like, we're not getting hit with Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hate underwater levels, this one is like one of the granddaddies of uh, how to annoy you in water level form. Um, yeah, I I feel like I pulled something and I unlocked something, but I, I like just... Oops. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run after that guy. There you go. I know, I, I can I can reload and, and try it again, but uh So where was I? I was up here. Wait, yeah, hold on, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. I was right here. Sneaky peeky. Sneaky peeky. Sneaky peeky. <laughs> Sneaky peeky. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize that one, there's a ledge here. Like, uh. So, hold on. Do I. I don't shoot him, right? Because he's gonna, like, jump off. Yeah, he's just gonna jump off. Okay, hold on. I've got to, like, get through this whole section without, like, him noticing, right? Because, like, you can't take him out. You've just got to, like, go. Does he look anywhere near this way? No, he doesn't, no. So we're a bit more okay. There's a drop here. This seems fruitful because that's the drop that I unlocked. Which has a green. Uh, which I might have picked up. Maybe. 
this now opens up to further back in the room, but at least we're on this ledge without him noticing. Wherever he's hiding, I have no idea. Oh, he's okay, he's still over there, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't have a ton to say about the F1 season, and honestly, the Abu Dhabi race was fine. There's a bit of drama, a bit of George Russell on the comms. Um, but overall, nothing really too, too big. Um, the guard, by the way, the, because there was the guard and the, you know, the kind of dark clad sentry guy. Um, but the guard contains a key. You need to 100% know that you've got that key. Because I feel like if you continue on this way or a way... It's not that guard, by the way, so, uh... This doesn't even... Hold on, yeah, 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 this is actually where you continue the level, but... This isn't exactly a ledge that, you know, you couldn't have just been on before. Where do you need to go for the... Where do you need to go without setting off the guy? Because I'm like, yeah, oh, I can sneak around there, but like... What am I getting out of that? Am I going up over there? There is a big health here. Very nice. Um, I'm not too sure where that secret is. I know there is one. I just don't really know off in my head, like, what? Is this guy gonna yeah, I was thinking, like, yeah, he's gonna spot me there. Can I, like, follow him? Can I follow him just so I've got an understanding? Where did he go? Where did he go? He just dived off right here. Well, I mean, this is the, the water area you would end up in. You would continue swimming down here and eventually you'd continue the level uh, by grabbing a... Grabbing a... <sighs> I think you just gotta swim this tunnel. Is it just you need to go through this tunnel? Is that the guy? Like, you need to just go all the way down here without him noticing? Because if so, then I could totally, like, run that way and do that. Or at least I gotta get all the way around to the to its other side, right? No, I am actually curious. Like, if you chase this guy, like someone's gonna spot me right here. But I'm just curious. Where did he? Where did he dive off to? <laughs> Legit nowhere. Okay, well, I'm just gonna assume that if he's got his eyes out right there, they really do want you to just kind of sneak around this way. But then you've got the guard there? Hmm. I'm gonna take like three more mental minutes of this and then I'm just gonna like give up. Someone can figure out what the secret is. I assume this guard's just gonna spot me as soon as I walk around a certain ledge, right? Yeah, like literally that ledge. And then he's gone, he's, he's off the ledge. So you have to not walk around that way. So where, where can you climb other than like all the way over there? Where can you, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to piece together what they want out of the secret. I've got the, the, the idea, the gist. But the, the actual execution... I don't see there being any way around him other than behind the, the, you know, the alarm goes off.
I don't quite get it. No. Alright. Okay. I don't get it. I don't get it. Alright. This guy... He goes. He goes... You see... He's literally making it up. He's making it up as we go. He just swam into the air. So... But you gotta, you gotta note this individual because... When you kill him, he drops a key. This key is needed for later in the level. And if you just decide to not kill this guy, maybe if you're going for that secret, you're not gonna kill that guy and you're not gonna get his key. Which is very sad for you because then you miss the key. Also, this guy drops more harpoons. I thought you'd like more harpoons. All right, well, let's just continue the level like like always, like, like we should do. Um, because remember, there's, there's one teeny tiny level after this one. Not long enough to really matter a ton. But it still is a level. Um, and I love how this is still the museum level. Just like the sewer part was connected to the outside balcony area. And the train part was connected to the train part. Because it's a really long train level. Wasn't there a train in the Area 51 levels as well? Got a couple of trains in this game, I'll tell you that. Lots of poison darts and stuff as well, so... Yeah, yeah. If there's one thing I do really like about this game, is that Lara gets to don a, a few extra outfits. She wears something different everywhere she goes, including even the final area. She wears something classic to start off with, and then, you know... A bit of different stuff, so... Drop down, slide a bit, I guess, and we'll just we'll just drop down and continue on. We'll just we'll just commit. We'll just commit to, to what's going on here. Okay, swimming through this corridor, which looks similar to an earlier corridor, we've got this guy with a torpedo gun firing straight at us. Now I do not have a harpoon. I, I, I do not have a harpoon gun. I don't know how I've managed to go this long. So I'm gonna have to kinda skirt past this guy while he's trying to pop me some shots in the back of my neck. Very painful. But it's not that bad because one, there's a crocodile here, so it's gonna sort of terrorize this guy. And two, you'll notice that there's a little machine here. Now, this is an incredibly infamous room. Oh, hi there, crocodile. How you doing? This is an incredibly infamous room, uh, from what I hear, because effectively you have four floors, uh, sorry, two floors, four directions, two doors in each floor. That is a possible uh, 16 exits to this room. Now, obviously, you came in through this, uh, bottom left one. This, uh, this scuba diver guy is probably our tell. I'm gonna leave the crocodile here, because the crocodile is good fun. He's chilling as well. Um, also, uh, one of these, only one of these has air. Since I played this level the other day, I know it's the one just to the left of where the, the machine is. But, again, first time players are gonna get so crazy caught out. First time players are also going to get so crazy caught out at where on earth do you go afterwards? So, uh, if you can sort of tell, there's a bit of colored lighting in each of these rooms. Um, the lower floors are also almost completely, like, fruitless. They don't exactly go anywhere too useful. Um, so I think I'm going to save here, just, just to... You never know. You never know what's going on. And if I've activated platforms or things like that, it's going to get very confusing. But we've got this door just to the left of where we started. Uh, it leads into this little tiny room. But there's a... there's a. I'm going to need to take out a crocodile, aren't I? Okay, crocodile, you're, you're, you're mine. Where you at? I'm not getting them. I'm really not getting them. <laughs> I'm wasting all my all my harpons. So hold on, we'll we'll get them a bit better this time. Bong 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 bong. There you go. You can see there's a big health right there as well. There's just so many items and things scattered around that this area feels very hard to understand, especially when your air, even though it you know it lasts for a while, it's like okay, you gotta kind of awkwardly swim out of this room. Then you gotta, you know, swim down to the ledge, climb off the thing, swim around to the item you wanted to interact with, grab it, and then swim back to your thing, and go on. And by that point, you've probably lost a fair bit of time. I think I've got just enough time to pull this lever, and this will highlight where we need to continue on with this area. But it's like, legit, if you go down any of those colored paths, really, 
you're gonna like find that you don't have a door open. Now, no, it's green. It's green with it. You can remember the color that the cutscene is showing you because this will highlight where you need to go. There's a little blue corridor there. You can bet your bottom dollar we're not going into the blue corridor yet. We're going to the green corridor. Which one's the green corridor? Uh, once I get a bit of air, I'll show you. But yeah, this area lives in infamy for, you know, this whole reason. It's purple, oh, it's green to my right. Yeah, that's right, there's multiple in the same direction. Now, yeah, some are closed off, so it's not like you actually have 16 proper exits to this place. Um, but you just need to, like, yeah, mentally go, oh yeah, swim down. Swim down a bit. Yep. Okay, okay, there's a health and a lever, so I'm gonna go get the health. Okay, cool, now I'm gonna swim across, get the lever. I didn't even divert, by the way, I didn't even, like, I went straight from the air room to here. Oh, oh, and now, and now I'm a bit stuck, that's okay, I can get around, get to the machine. Now I gotta do a UE. Air's flashing now, I haven't even left the room, I'm gonna go back, it's up a bit. It's across, uh, don't get distracted by that, if I swim right, I'm back in this room and it was like right across here. I'm about to start drowning in a second, that's okay, I've been picking up some health. If I swim up to the top, I've lost half my health. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible how this all works out like that? I know, right? Also, what color did I open? I wasn't paying attention, my health is running out. <laughs> that's how, that's how I play this, that's how this happened. Okay, well it was either purple or red. Let's go with, uh, red. I'm feeling red today. Also, rip the colorblind people. They're gonna absolutely struggle in this area. <laughs> it all looks the same. Oh, look at that. Green crystal. Now swim in here and you'll spot another one of these elusive levers. So you gotta go off, pull the lever. It now points at a blue area, along with, uh, you can hear a scuba diver having a fun time. That scuba diver has already met you. Who are these scuba divers exactly? I assume they're the, the mercenaries from earlier. But like, I swear there's like museum staff. There was like at least one museum staff chilling with the sentry guy down below. Someone's gonna be like, oh, you didn't wait for your full oxygen, and you took your sweet time getting down the ledge. Uh, we're in the blue door, so I'm just gonna ignore these chaps, because, uh, for some reason, Lara is... She doesn't take as much damage from a harpoon as you'd expect. Alright, swim down here. Oh my gosh, swim down here. That's right. We got a long chamber, a very long swim up. But there is air at the top. We have salvation. Finally. Finally. Here we go. And we get some music playing because we're underwater for a bunch. You probably didn't hear any music. Uh, welcome to uh, what I can only assume is a boiler room. Um, this area looks like there's sort of a puzzle going on here. And the puzzle is you swim in the water and you spot that there's a ledge. <laughs> there's, a little, there's a little lever chilling in the water. Just as it always is. Pull the lever and the fire stops. Along with more harpoons. Don't mind if I do. I'm curious where a harpoon gun is. Because I... Like, every time I play this game, I always pick up just some other item. And I, I my actual, like, demo save, I had the harpoon gun for a while. So I'm like... Where is, uh, where is, um... Where's the... The goods... So save here, we jump. These things don't turn back on, so don't worry. Jump again. And jump one more time. Where we'll be created by a wonderful sound, that's right. The crushing platforms of doom. Interestingly, you've got a little uh, hideaway here, but... Uh, doesn't exactly do anything. I'm not too sure what's going on here for the moment. Maybe maybe it'll make more sense as I come back. Well, you can tell what this is going to happen in, in five seconds. Lara's going to become a pancake. It does do damage. Like that. 
I'm glad that I lost almost all my health, but not enough that I can use the big health pack. Very nice. And, like all good levels, there's a ceiling break. I say like all good levels as if this level hasn't already done like three of them. <laughs> There's been so many ceiling, ceiling great areas as well. Um, I believe if you go over here to your left, you'll actually find a secret as well. Or if it's not a secret, it's just something. Maybe this uh, highlights the mystery of what I was looking for. Oh. Oh, okay. This is just foreshadowing at this point. I'm pretty sure you can't actually get anywhere. Like, I'm, I'm even... I'm going to show off this jump. I just want to say, yeah, nah. Like, the way they present this room, it's like, yeah, nah. It's a giant um, lift shaft. We use the word lift here in Australia, sorry. Um, or elevator for the, for the Americans. Although we are in England in this game right now, so it probably is a lift shaft. Anyway, uh, it's purely there for foreshadowing, I guess. You can clearly see that there's actually just a little tiny ledge in the waterfall that we can access. And, uh, that's where you need to go. But at least this area is not as much key gathering, even though we have yet to use the, um, you know, the boiler room key, even though we are in a boiler room. Because, incredibly, absolutely incredibly, as you get to this... After all that swimming, after all that, like, you know, going back and forth. Granted, you know, it's not actually as much distance because you've been going back and forth so much. But, like, that's the key. That's where it goes. It's so far down that you would be sorely missed. And on top of that, you just gotta hit a button anyways. This now opens up in the purple corridor. That's right, we gotta go back. We gotta go back. So the ride that never ends hasn't ended. There we go. We slide back down into the shallow water. Well, it's not that shallow. It's pretty deep. Like legit, if you had concrete boots, you'd be you'd be going for quite a while. I never was like that. If oh my gosh! It was just the harpoons. It's just because some guys shooting at me from down below. Hi there. See ya. Alright, let's try and let's try and get the heck oh, Lara, Lara, Lara. <laughs> let's get the heck out of Dodge quick. Cause I think there's even more scuba divers as we come back. I think you need to breathe as well. I don't think you could just rush straight for the purple door. Also another crocodile appears. Oh, 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 never mind, never mind. This game sucks. This game sucks. Because the whole room flooded. Okay, well, uh, wish me luck on this one, because uh, I witnessed that the whole room flooded, and uh, you got another elevator shaft to swim up. Uh, uh, oh, we're cutting it, we're cutting it, we're cutting it. Oh, we just made it, we just made it. Very nice, very, very nice, Lara. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Oh my goodness. At least, at least they're nice enough. They give you a big health here. We're almost at the end of the level, fortunately. Very, very fortunately. What is this one so far? This has been 26 minutes. It's been kind of long. <laughs> Legit, all these London levels, they go on. They go on for so long. And the worst part as well is that I know I've got to do four levels next stream plus the bonus level, so... Because it's the end of the game. This is, uh, it's not lava, that's just oil, I think. Um, what you gotta do is you gotta jump and then walk a bit forward to avoid these penduli. Step back. Run and jump and clean your room. Step, whoop. She fell over. You could probably use a little bit of health to, you know, not cop it. Like, if you, as in if you take the hit, then you at least dodged bits, but I don't know, man. I'm going pro. Whoa. No, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I made it. 
very funky platforms. Although I'm probably going to cop it from this guy standing right here, who is the very, very last thing in the level. Now, kind of annoyingly, this guy and this long corridor distracts you from... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to cop a small med. Just a small one, because I know your health comes back after the level. Although I seem to get him anyways, so, okay. Um, now, interestingly, as you continue down here, we are now on the other side of this lift shaft. Again, with no jump. There is nowhere to go. So you might be going, huh, okay, I've done everything you wanted, game. But you had to just note that uh, there was a little tiny crevice right here. You know, in the, in the dimly lit ceiling, and it just goes up a bit, and it, it just continues on. Oh, oh, this is happens. So, we started this level in the, you know, the dam's little, you know, lair with the chair. You then go into a museum. You go through the museum a bit, go up, climb up a sphinx, that kind of stuff. A couple of puzzles. Also, this, finally, is a ledge that you can actually climb across. And do a bit of a jump like that, and you'll make your way to the other side. Um, we then returned the embalming fluid, where we were then ejected out into some sewers, where there were still more guards, and we've somehow managed to navigate our way to a, uh, an elevator shaft, where, again, with one last amazing jump away, because that's not a ceiling that you can grab as well, that's just, you know... This is just a, a jump, although it is a bit wider the other way, so... We crawl through the last of these little air ducts. And, uh, we, we are greeted with, finally, the end of the level. Uh, this is weirdly a ledge as well. Like, this <laughs> takes a little bit of time <laughs> to get down and jump and get out of there. A bit more crawling, just, to, just for good measure. All of that just to get to the end of the level. Oh, so much effort, so much work. Ah, Miss Croft. I take it you're ready to sign on. To what? Well, my books. You see, with your lifestyle, you'd be the perfect campaign for my products. Just think, you wouldn't be needing those unsightly weapons anymore. No, but I'll probably have an unsightly face, judging by your past experiments. My what? Oh yes, they're all still alive. Very much so, in fact. All I want is the artifact. <laughs> right. In your next life. She, we'll she, see. she she literally just reached out, tried to grab it, like what do you think was gonna happen? Uh welcome to the very, very last level, which is City. There is one singular secret. I don't know what one secret is. We'll just we'll just have a crack at it. Um but fortunately it's it's just the boss fight level. Nothing really too weird. Step outside, and she, one, she decided to just run outside for you, and two, uh, she's gonna freaking just chill over there with a little magical scepter and start firing stuff at you. When she's charging a shot like this, you gotta kinda take in your best interest to get the heck out of dodge, cause you're gonna lose half your health, like exactly what I did. Her little tiny shots don't deal that much damage. But the one that she's charging up, definitely. You can shoot her a bunch. Doesn't exactly do anything, but when she does that charge attack, like that, shooting her does let her cancel the attack. And that at least is your saving grace to getting past this area without copping too much. Uh, also, uh, I just want to remind you, I'm playing Tomb Raider by the way. We've got this immortal witch from the 1800s who's got a cosmetic, uh, you know, company that basically manufactures uh, zombies that last forever. Um, and uh, she's holding on to... Ooh. That that shot is charged, by the way. Her next shot is going to be that shot. Yep, okay, cool. You gotta basically just run up this area, hit buttons, that kind of stuff. You're going to be copping hits. There's no way that you could probably get through this area without any med kits. Maybe if you're pro. There's a bit of splash damage as well on... Um, on that as well, so you want to be a little careful, but climb up a bit more. Uh, I'm gonna do a backward. We can climb up a little bit more. We're nearly at the top. It's not actually that long a level. It's pretty. It's pretty brief. Um, as we climb up here, you'll notice that uh, yes, 
the long-awaited, much-anticipated <laughs> mesh wall. It's back, along with a fun little mirror bit where she's, you know, chilling there. Hi, are you gonna, are you gonna dodge this or? No, you're not gonna dodge that. Very nice. She didn't start that until after I was on that ledge. Well, take two, take two. <laughs> The helicopter is sort of signaling the top of the area as well, so it's really not that long a level. Hi, right, yes, you want to cancel your shot or no? You're just gonna, you're just gonna casually commit to doing the shot. Okay. It's it's a little bit awkward, but then again, it's like, well, you know, I've got to somehow justify a boss fight. And, uh, we've had one where I've jumped back and forth a ton, and another one where I didn't jump back and forth as much. So, sure. If anything, hey, you know, I commend them for having boss fights and having, um, you know, like, actual climaxes to each of these chapters. Because sometimes a Tomb Raider chapter just ends. It just stops. And it's like, there's something kind of nice about having a, you know, a witch who throws freaking spear things at you. Are uh, you gonna shoot at me? There it is. Oh, excuse me, they hit me in the <laughs> corner of the waist. <laughs> jump up, jump up, and get down, climb around. Oops. It's kind of weird as well because she doesn't climb down from her ledges, so she's gonna be on the the high ledge just like the entire time in case you accidentally slip and fall up and you lose most of your health. Jeez. She's not very kind, is she? It's almost like she wants Lara dead for some reason. Not sure why. All Lara wants is the key to her immortality. Isn't that all we ask? I love as well that it's like you got immortality and you still want to make like a multi, you know, billion dollar cosmetics company. I mean, I know it's like, well, you need it in order to keep your immortality. Imagine that. Immortality and you're still a slave to capitalism. What I want to know is that, like, in, in reality, you know, if someone was apparently able to, you know, live for so long, like, how on earth would anyone pass that off? How on earth would we ever, like, go, oh, another person? It might be like, yeah, you can change your identity, but it's like, for the government? Really? I don't know, can you? So anyway, we run all the way over to this far ledge, and if you... ...shoot this panel, it zaps the ground, causing her to fall over and, uh, explode. Now, unfortunately, the ground is, uh, still electrified, so you sort of need to unturn it off, and you can't turn it off via the same ledge, but... If you jump back, and for some reason this counts as climbing for a hot second, I love that. <laughs> uh, we should be able to actually jump back over to the ledge that she was on. Never trust a blonde in a Tomb Raider, that always seems to be like the, the word of wisdom. Now you gotta watch out, all that metal platform is still electrified, so you're gonna need to work your way around just that little bit. Is that? No. I was like, this ledge isn't electrified, right? Work your way around a little bit, drop down, and the button's on this backside. Hit the button, and the electric field turns off, allowing you to step down, and we can finally grab the fourth piece of our mystical meteorite. And the level is done, and my controller disconnected, nice. The level is done. We are now on track to our final destination, Antarctica, where we have one last cutscene before we close out the stream. Lara decides, let's just take a helicopter ride. What could possibly go wrong? Windows open, you know. It's not like it's not like it's cold. Come in base. Come in base. Dead air, man. We gotta get down. This is too much. I don't ever trust going to Antarctica via helicopter. I feel like the boat would always be the safest way. Uh, So rip Lara, she just bails. That was hairy. Yeah. 
there she goes. Oh! That's a very hilarious way of dropping out. And uh, welcome to the final world of the game, simply titled Antarctica, this level. Um, but yeah, we, we're at the final parts of the game, uh, which does mean the final stream. <laughs> you say let's go, but I've been streaming for three hours, it's nearly 11.30, so I'm going to call it there for this stream. But we've got one more stream next week, when the Christmas season starts, uh, and uh, I'll be able to beat the game by then. And also show you that wonderful bonus level that I keep hinting at all the time. Um, but we should be good. Uh, if you're wondering about the uh, the Lost Artifact bonus level or expansion levels, there'll be two other streams that will take place after next week's stream. But it should all come before the end of the year. So that's all good. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's all the London stuff. I did not like those levels as much. They are a bit too long, a bit too snaky, a bit too maze-like. But you know what? It's hard for a reason, I guess. So... With that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. So if you enjoyed uh, parts of the stream, the whole stream, none of the stream, whatever it is, just, I don't know, follow on Twitch, you'll get the notification that I stream next week. And if you miss parts of this, uh, it will all be on YouTube sometime in the next 24 hours, depending on how long YouTube takes to uh, to encode the bod. Uh, please use an ad blocker because YouTube forces ads. It just literally forces them. Even in the, when there's no copyright content, whatever, it just forces them. So just use an ad blocker. Be safe. Um, and yeah, no, if you've enjoyed the streams or things like that, tell me about your experiences with Tomb Raider, uh, really any of it, or really any game in general. Just stuff like that. How are you finding them? How are you finding this? Play this game as well. Stuff like that. You know, that's always that's always the intention. I want to show off cool experiences, show off how I, how I feel, the opinions I think. Uh, don't get scammed by uh, people selling you about AI programs, I guess. There's that, so... Stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and, uh, I don't know, enjoy humanity for what it is. I don't know, it's something, something profound. So, have a good one, everyone. See ya.